other devices. Welcome to the March 1st, 2023 regular meeting of the Durham Planning Board. Uh, first thing we need to do is confirm a quorum. We do have that, Mr. Purinton, Mr. Williams, Ms. Kappinger, and myself, John Talbot. So we have four out of five and we have a quorum. Um, are there any amendments to the agenda? Anyone like to amend the agenda? Going, going, gone. Uh, the next is acceptance of the minutes of the prior meeting, which goes back to January 4th. I would move to accept the January 4th meeting minutes as presented. I'll second. We have a uh, motion and a second. Are there any comments, discussion? Seeing none, please raise a hand. Four zero. That takes us next to informational exchange on non-agenda items. So um, town officials, which we'll start with Mr. Labarge, our town planner, and then we'll open it up to the, the vast collection of town officials in the audience. Uh, the only thing I have to report is that I we met John and I with the select board last night and uh, presented the recommendations from the planning board and they made a request for a change to part 1B, which we're going to be discussing a little bit later. So, And the new GIS system is operational on the website. hope you've checked it out. And if you do see any errors, uh, you know, the, the, prop, the parcel maps in their, from their paper version were put into a GIS system. And some parcels were not connected to the TRIO database. And the consultant gave a list of about a dozen or so where the property record cards don't match the maps. So she's looking for the assessor to, uh, to you know, find out where those connections are and make them. So it's helping the assessing process as well as making all that information available to the public. So people have pointed out some errors. And as we, just, uh, as we receive them, probably they'll be handled and I've asked for direction from the consultant, but she's not gonna be paid to check it every time someone brings something. So what'll happen is every year they do updates. And so all of the parcel changes, the new subdivisions, everything goes in. Any errors that are found will probably be put into the pile with all of those other changes for the next uh, update. Okay, mine is one of them. Do we let, since we're on TV, do we let people know now that do they see you, email uh, you? We, we will forward them on. Okay. To the consultant, and she'll keep them in a file until she's ready to do the email updates. Tom Planner and say my property. Yep, and I okay. will I will follow up on yours, John. It, it okay. might be good to understand the schedule of the updates. Like, is yeah, it basically, be um, the tax assessment year goes from is it April first to April first? I know it's April, um, and so what happens is from uh, April of 2022 through April of 2023. Any property changes that have been made, somebody sold a lot, subdivision gets approved, uh, somebody changes the boundary line, uh, then usually there's about 20 changes uh, in terms of individual. And so those, as of April 1st of the following year, then get uh, basically documented and sent to the mapper, and then the maps are updated based on those changes. Okay, so like April, May timeframe. Yeah, well, usually there are several towns that are all, you know, trying to get their maps updated at the same time. So usually over the summer, the summer uh, okay. it'll be done. Okay. If you want it in the next round, you kind of, you need to get it needs it to be in for it. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Nope, that's it. Any other town officials that are here have any comments, questions, concerns? Thank you. Jokes. Um, so we're on to uh, residents, uh, and this is for stuff. That, two things. I know some of you folks are here. Uh, some of you are here for the project. Some, some of you, one of you at least, is here. I, I would guess to talk about the um, land use articles. I just want to ask one question and make a comment. I will make an exception this time. Okay. One, one. So if you step to the thing and announce who you are. Jovial mood this evening. <laughs> I'm Heather Roy. I live at 777 Hollowell Road. Um, and my question was um, based on the agenda, and it says that you're talking about the land use article amendments. Um, and there are select board members that are here in attendance. And I was fully anticipating that the select board chair would be here in attendance this evening. 
Um, if I may, he's in the next room. Okay. And so I'm wondering if they're here as residents or if they're here as members to participate in that conversation later. The, the town, the chairman of the select board is here as a presenter the same way the engineer would be for Deer Creek. So he's, I guess he's also a resident, but he's here to give the, the official version of what they have asked us to do. Okay. So with that being said, that um, if he is here as a select board member, which is what you just stated, um, I find it very inappropriate and also by his own admission. I read the letter that he sent to the planning board chair um, at our previous meeting where he stated that the select board should not be involved in recommendations sent to the board, that they simply vote up or down the recommendations. The timeline was set by this board to complete their work on the timeline as outlined by the planner at your last meeting to comply with the select board being able to vote on the Warren articles at their meeting last night. However, the select board chair now wants the article to read something different. And as such, you're here to discuss that again this evening, even though you've already voted as a board on what you would send to the select board. In addition to that, the select board chair stated at last night's meeting that what most people don't know is that the planning board is a quasi judicial board and that the select board has no say um, or impact on their work. Yet here we are tonight revisiting this again solely because the select board chair takes issue with it. You've already voted on your recommendations. So I would ask that this board keep that in mind when they arrive at the part of the discussion this evening and also how you choose to proceed at that point. If you've invited the select board chair to join your discussion, I was asking the question again, it's being um, redundant, I apologize, that if he's here as the select board member, um, because the public comment period closes when I'm done talking or if there's anybody else to make a comment. Um, per your agenda. In that case, I believe you should also include Mr. Roy as the Conservation Commission member since his commission is the commission that you tasked with this work. Finally, we should not be orchestrating Warren article recommendations to achieve a desired outcome and then continuously reworking them to attempt to achieve the desired outcome when the legislative body has spoken not once but twice on this issue. And I would again like to reassert my opinion to remove 1B from the warrant altogether. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other residents having heard none, we will move on to, we'll have that discussion on articles uh, following this. So non-residents who want to talk about something not on the agenda. Are jokes still an option? No. <laughs> You're not, particularly during your presentation. Uh, so none of no residents continuing business. So 5A is a decision by this board on whether we consider, uh, this is for Deer Creek, Deer Creek Crossing, whether we consider their application complete or not. And Mr. Thabarge, if you would like to just do an introduction to that. Sure. Uh, as indicated in the agenda packet, uh, this application was found to be incomplete at the November meeting. Uh, and the board reconsidered that decision at the December meeting, and it has been tabled uh, two times now, pending issuance of state agency reviews and permits. Uh, the three that were particularly noted in the notice of incomplete application were the DEP approval of the new stream crossing and removal of the existing one, the um, Army Corps of Engineer approval for of the new stream crossing, mm -hmm and the MDOT permit for the road entrance. So the applicant had submitted uh, copies of their DEP and Army Corps permit applications, uh, and they submitted a stormwater permit application as well. Uh, and, and then this is up until this point. On February 21st, they submitted a new packet, which included the MDOT permit, as well as updated plans to address the peer review comments. I received today and presented a copy, hard copy to you tonight of the final comments from Will Haskell, the town's peer review engineer, and he identified one additional change that he recommends uh, be required, which is an impermeable barrier on top of a, of a, a stormwater treatment uh, berm. So at this point, the applicant is before you again tonight, uh, seeking a determination of completeness and commencement of the substantive review. 
if you decide that you do want to proceed with the substantive review, your packet includes uh, the, the a draft uh, decision in which you would go through all of the criteria and make a determination of whether they meet that criteria or not. So the two things are, that are not complete, we have, there are three things, MDOT, Corps of Engineers, DEP, MDOT we've received. Yes. Uh, so Corps of Engineers and DEP remain. Correct. Uh, Hold on. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah, go ahead. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, that's my question. Okay. Good, because I was actually going to ask that same one. So there's, yeah, I was just going to confirm what we called incomplete last time were those three things. Yeah. We have one. So there's still two outstanding. I would defer you to the applicant now to make their case okay. of why you should be considering this complete. Yeah. Right. Well, we're not there quite yet. You, you will get your chance. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just had one other thing too. Sure. Thank you, John. Um, so I just want to, in the packet, um, there's uh, the um, Grange responded on February 21st. Is that when there's okay? So responded to comments from um, Goro Palmer. Is that when you Correct. respond? Correct. Okay. So, so your packet includes the latest cover letter from uh, Mr. Burnham mm -hmm. and the plans were done as a separate posting on the uh, website yep. calendar. And you have hard copies of that tonight. That okay. was the submission. Yep. Uh, and then uh, I also included the prior peer review comments and the preliminary uh, notice of decision. When were those submitted from Burnham, you, Grange, to Goral? Um, I'm just wondering if we've seen these already, I guess is my question, because I'm seeing older things in here, and I'm just... Can we, can we hold that thought? Sure. Let's, let's get through a completion, sure, sure. and then okay. we'll, we'll get into the discussion of um, whether, you know, the, uh, if we get there to the okay. substantive... Well, this is a completeness question, though. It is kind of relating to that, because the Go ahead and do questions... It. Yeah. yeah, stand corrected. So if you want to give the opportunity for the for the applicant to present yes, their case, that might answer some of these questions. Yeah. Yes. So in that package, there's actually also an email correspondence from the DEP because the DEP for PBRs don't actually send you a permit. They just, after it's met. So I clarified with her in an email that I think her is a her, Alexis. But there's a, there's an email that that DEP permit has been received. So we got two of the, we got the Army Corps. We don't, we don't have the Army Corps yet. We have the DOT permit and the DEP permit taken care of. Um, the plans you have are each plan has a comment that Will Haskell had requested and we made the changes. And so we sent you an updated plan in response to all of Will's comments. This latest one obviously has not been included. I haven't seen that until I just walked in. Okay. And for the DEP permit, um, <clears throat> Did you resubmit with the changes that Goral asked for? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that that re that the, the resubmission, the package that I sent in, I included two meetings ago. I just hadn't heard back yet. So the updated package I had, I've sent to Will, I've sent to you, and then the actual response from the DEP, I just got back two weeks ago. So what is that response? So I saw it's that just somewhere. an email saying, "Hey, we made the changes to your permit. We we." Because Will had asked me to include some check boxes on the on the form saying you need to include your adjacent to the wetland stuff and and so I did I checked those boxes include some up, upgraded plans showing where the underdrain soil filter is because I originally had just on the stream crossing mm -hmm. but our underdrain soil filter remember when we walked out there we walked across that yeah. bridge and there's that big disturbed area I had put that underdrain soil filter right in the disturbed area to minimize further disturbances near the stream but it is within like. It's like the corner of it touches the 75 foot setback from the stream. Mm -hmm. So I did technically have to include that. So you work included that in the new permit application? That I got the response back. Okay. From. And all you're going to get from DP, I saw it somewhere and I can't find it right now, is that general. Yeah, you get, oh, right. The main you general the construction. But that's or something like that. The main general construction permit, something I think that the, the contractors do on the side. That's like a, hey, we're about to start. And, and that's, that's like a, another just paperwork kind of. You have our, our DEP permit for the PBR stuff. The PBR stuff separate. The PBR stuff's the stream crossing mm -hmm. and the work adjacent to a wetland. And that's something you submit. You wait two weeks. If they haven't heard, if you haven't heard back from them, you just assume it's approved. And then because I amended it, I had asked a question saying, hey, do I need to include an extra fee? And he responded saying or she saying, don't worry about it. 
made the changes. Don't worry about the fee. Your permit so has been So does that updated. include the NERPA too? Yeah, that's is what that, that what is. He's that's the NERPA about? permit okay. by rule. Okay. And, and, yeah. okay. okay, so if I understand that discussion, we're down to one thing that is missing, the Corps of Engineers permit. So the question before us is, do we want to grant an exception <clears throat> for the Corps of Engineer permit not being available and start substantive review. If the answer to that is no, then our second mission would be to decide what they would, they will need a sixth, an extension, which we can grant up to six months. So step one is do, do we want to, do I have a, do we want to uh, accept it missing just the complete, except for the Corps of Engineer report with perhaps a, an addendum and caveat that before they start construction, we get the Corps of Engineer report. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel we're also missing detailed drawings of the stream crossing. That was something that at least I requested. And I think you commented on that too. The, 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 the uh, Will Haskell peer review pointed out that the stream meanders on their plan through the crossing, which is, which is the road, plus the banks and then the culvert and the plans show a straight culvert. So Will Haskell's question for the applicant, which he can address tonight is, does the stream get put into a straight line through the culvert or does the culvert not be a straight line and follow the meander of the stream? And I'm assuming that was a discussion with Army Corps. That, that's what I'm waiting to hear back on. Okay. That's the, so really the only, I think in, in obviously you guys can agree or disagree. I think the big item that could be changed is how that stream is crossed. I mean, my my proposal to them is the stream the, in their in their general notes. If you look at that stream crossing detail, which I think I included in the last package, there is there is a detail. So it's, mm -hmm. it's just a it's just a section. It's a it's very basic. It's very uh, kind of conceptual. It may be on, yeah, it's on basic. On the, yeah, like, with the footer and was the fourth drawing. I forget yeah. what number of the like yeah three or five. That's maybe. it. The big one in the back. It's just a quick cross section saying existing grade. You got to set those footers. It's essentially in line with the Army Corps guidance on how to cross a stream. It's a small picture at the bottom of one of the pages. I mean, the notes on that drawing. Yeah, are I, I just don't feel that's enough. I feel like we need to. That needs to be designed. Mm -hmm. I don't, not figured out in the field. Well, if we, yeah, this is a question. If we accept that they submitted something, the next step during substantive review would is have they submitted enough? If that makes sense. If is that the correct information or sufficient information? I I agree with Ron, in, but that it goes back to the permit. So if the core is reviewing this topic right now, we're still waiting on that. So. Yeah. My thought is we tabled this before because of one of these permits. We're still waiting on that permit, so we still tabled. Okay. Additional comments? Thoughts? I agree with that. I think it's pre premature. I need, uh, since I was one of the strong proponents of tabling it back in October, November. I will say that I am more comfortable at this point proceeding with the caveat they cannot start that we so we can start start substantive review and then if they don't have the core permit and I will ask me before I go too much further what have you heard from the core I had original conversations with them saying hey we'll have it back to you about the same schedule as the DEP and maybe she thought that meant it was going to take 2 months but She's ghosted me the last five times I've talked to her. Okay, they all have bosses. I know. So we're going there. So the completeness but. review just says that they've submitted something for everything. Doesn't necessarily mean it, that we agree with it. That's correct. And then it just mean, it means that you have the information right. on which to make a decision whether it meets or not meets. So if they don't have something, then you don't have a complete. So we could vote yes on that, for instance, and then we would move right into substance in for review, right. and then we right. could then discuss if it's if it's yeah if you don't like if we don't think that the not if you don't like it if you don't think that the <laughs> design is sufficient that would be part of sufficient or if it's wrong yeah uh that's part of substantive review I'm comfortable with that. Uh, but we don't even have it we it's it's like the completeness review we don't have it to look at you were just talking about the design we don't have that which is based on well the, they're saying they do 
and then I guess it's up to us to say that if what they say they have is enough. Let me ask the, the, the follow-up on Juliet's comment. The core is just, well, what is the core saying? On their permit, if they give you the permit, what are they going to permit you to do? That's, got, that's stream crossing as designed right there. As designed. That's right. all their purview so is. So if they don't like your design, they won't give that's you the exactly. permit. Exactly. Okay. So it could change, which could change substantive review. We would it, have to review. Could, when we say substantive, it could change how we look at the culvert. But I feel like the rest of the project, besides that little culvert, I mean, that could, that's just a piece of a drawing that can be moved around. The detail can be changed. But as far as substantive, I feel like the other pieces of the project can certainly be reviewed. And if that culvert, I feel like that the, the Army Corps is the authority on that crossing. I respect all of your opinions on the matter, but I feel like they should be the final say on that crossing. Yeah. So we can discuss that detail all we want, but until here's my, I guess I want to make sure I'm clear on this. In my mind, if we move forward with completion, there is a what would caveat, a what's a condition? Condition, thank you, that says they cannot start until we, you know, we want to get final approval until we've seen that and we're satisfied. That was that was one of the arguments when we when we voted on this before when it got defeated and it was ron and i basically said we was talking about conditions and it sounds like you've been i've been swayed to the, <laughs> I've moved over to the dark side or the white side there was a lot hanging out there <clears throat> okay really, i got a question though for ron so say the core comes back and says they're good with how it's proposed you still don't have enough detail to review it right yeah, I mean, if we're kind of moving into substantial. Well, I'm just, I I'm think. trying but to I, be. I would agree that even if the core says that's appropriate way to cross the stream, I think we need to see a good detailed design on how it gets done. Right. Um, like that concept and just a line on the plan doesn't really tell us much. And I don't think it tells a builder much, you know, contractor much. So, you know, how do we know how they're actually going to cross that stream? So that would be a condition, is that we'd want to see more detail in the design. It wouldn't of, be a condition. I, I don't think that would be a condition. It would to be. me, that would be substantive. You know, that, that part of the application is not doesn't meet the substantive. Okay. I mean, it, but is it complete? You consider that? I, would say, I know we don't have the core. Yeah, Are say, you willing yeah. to make a waiver, an exception to the core permit? and get to substantive review and then as we get into the, the design pieces of it because they have submitted design whether we think it's correct at this point is not you know whether we think the the slope of ditches is correct or not is uh, is not a, that part of the discussion they've submitted that part of the design and is my thought yeah i think um, I, i'm comfortable saying that they have Checked all the boxes, minus the core. Yeah. It would you if the motion would the motion be acceptable to say they cannot? We won't get final approval till we see the core permit. Yeah. Actually, have it in hand. I'm, I'm asking whoever makes the motion can word it however they want. If that's a motion, I will second. I will make the motion that we <laughs> accept it as complete with the condition uh, that we see the. Um, uh, court, we have the Corps of Engineer permit before we give final plan approval. Second. We have any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, please raise your hand if you vote yes. Three to one. Okay, we've completed completion. So now we would get into a substantive review and um, before we start, I, I would like to commend the planner and you guys for beating your way through this and <laughs> Mr. Hastel from Goral Palmer, because uh, I think we're going to, we as a town are going to end up with a hell of a lot better project uh, as a result, assuming we, you know, we get through this thing. So I do want to start off by saying that what uh, I would recommend we do to the planning board is that, as you, you know, for the vote, we'll go through like the checklist and say, this is, we're okay, yes or no with this. We're, what I'd like to do is go through the, the George, have George give an introduction and substantive review. And I think there's five key issues that he'll highlight and you all may have some others. Go through those, go through any others that you have and then we can work our way through the checklist as we 
finish this this evening and go into to next month. All right. I have one question. Um, in the notice of complete application, we talk about um, we're scheduling a meeting to talk about it. So are we kind of doing that now or like talking about it now instead of scheduling a meeting for it? Or Yeah. And, and I think, you know, this form is designed to do a process where applicant submits the final plan after completing everything. And then the board makes a determination of completeness and then schedules a meeting uh, to review it and do the substantive. This process has obviously not followed that standard procedure. And so at this point, you need to adopt a letter determining it to be officially complete, which you've already made that decision tonight. So this is just a standard notice that we send to the applicant. So you don't necessarily need to pick a date in the future by the ordinance. You could start tonight. So that's what I'd like to do is start this evening, cover the key points that you all have, that uh, Mr. Tabarge has. And as I said, that since we're waiting for the core permit anyway, we'll get into a final vote. Because as you go through their responses to Goral Palmer and some other stuff, you bounce from <clears> structural <throat> design to environmental to uh, wetlands, the whole nine yards. I think it's, it's better to beat through those issues and then take notes if we have any concerns that the structural design is not good enough when we get to that on the, the checklist. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. With that, Mr. Tabarish, please. Okay, well, I'll start out by just reminding us of the process that we just discussed about the completeness determination. Planning board review of a subdivision under uh, main law and under the land use ordinance that Durham adopted has a three-step process. First step is the sketch plan review where you just talk conceptually about the project and the board kind of indicates, you know, has an understanding of what's going to be coming. Applicant understands what's going to be expected to make the process work more efficiently. Then they apply for a preliminary approval. And in the preliminary approval, which was completed in September, you go through all of the criteria and basically make a preliminary determination whether you think that this project, if all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted, and get the outside agency reviews satisfactorily, then you think the project can meet and will meet those standards. <clears throat> so then, the, so that's the heavy lifting. And you spent a lot of time talking about a lot of issues last summer, the stream crossing, the drainage on the neighbors, the wetlands, the, you know, the survey accuracy. We went through all of those issues last summer and resolved them in a set of preliminary approval conditions. So those preliminary approval conditions are in your packet. Uh, and so the final plan in my estimation and understanding is that this is really just to make sure that the, the decision that you make is legally valid and enforceable by the, the, construct, the uh, construction reviewers, which will include Will Haskell and, uh, and also the code officer on various aspects of the project. So the purpose of this final stage is to get all of the documentation clearly established in the record to say this is the project design that is approved by the board that the board has determined to meet all of the criteria of the ordinance so you will ultimately have to go through the whole checklist again but you've already done that so i find that the most effective way to, to use your time in this process is to focus on the big issues <clears throat> so there are five that I've identified, and then you can feel free if there are other issues that you've identified in your review that you think the board should fully discuss to get a policy direction on this determination, then those you should also discuss. So the five that I've identified, which I think are the key parts of this approval decision, uh, include, first of all, obviously the stream crossing. And, uh, you know, that the board made a preliminary plan decision that said, if they get the state environmental permits based on their expertise, the board will consider they, they've met the standard of the, of the local ordinance. You are going to rely upon the O's agency expertise in those reviews. Uh, you made that decision as part of the preliminary approval. Um, However, sorry, were yeah. you done with that one? No. Okay. Oh, sorry. Keep going. I was just going to say, and also that included the removal of right. the, uh, the existing crossing which was put in without permits. They say they don't, didn't require permits, but it's creating a dam in the stream at this point. And they agreed to remove it. 
we want to make sure that that's done in keeping with the state environmental permit uh, permit requirements and their expertise as well. So let me just list the five and then we can discuss them individually. Oh, Is that okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. go ahead. Just to get it all on the table. Yeah. The second, to me, key issue is the fire pond. Mm -hmm. The fire chief has communicated to me and to the, to the board his concern based on other fire ponds in town <clears throat> that this pond actually have water when they need it. And obviously the drought conditions are the, are the major concern. So the applicant has submitted additional information documenting what they estimate the recharge rate of the pond is going to be and the evaporation rate and they are, their position is, and you can discuss that at length with them, that this pond will have water year round adequate for firefighting purposes. So to me, that's the second key issue. <clears throat> the third key issue, which I've pointed out for at least two packets, is that they are proposing a stormwater treatment basin close to the stream on land designated to be owned by uh, the current property owner, not by the association. If that is the proposal, then there needs to be an easement on the survey plan, which I haven't seen, uh, to say that, that the homeowners association has the rights to have that basin there and go and maintain it. Mm -hmm. That is not on the survey plan. And again, I've pointed that out at least for a couple of months. That that's an and issue. then it's separate from the fire pond. <clears throat> <clears throat> that's yep. right. Different they do show an easement to the town for the fire pond. <clears throat> and in my agenda notes, I also indicated that should be clarified that the town is not going to be maintaining that fire pond. It's going to be the homeowners association. The easement to the town gives the town the authority, the fire department, to go in there and use it if they aren't maintaining it and take steps to have it fixed and then charge the homeowners association. And that really needs to be pretty clearly spelled out in the homeowners association documents. So, uh, sorry. The, the, that was all along the lines of the same easement or was that number four? Did I just miss number four? Uh, I haven't done four okay. yet. <clears throat> that was the uh, three. I, I just was explaining yeah. how there is an easement on the fire pond. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, four is they have requested a conditional agreement. And under the, the recently revised uh, land use ordinance amendments, uh, which adopted the procedure that most towns use to give flexibility to developers, applicants, uh, on the performance guarantee, because... The estimate, the original estimate they submitted was about 300,000 uh, and Will Haskell's peer review ramped that up to 600,000 for the all the infrastructure improvements. And so they proposed rather than posting either a cash deposit or a letter of credit for $600,000, what they proposed was to use the mechanism in the ordinance which says they will proceed with construction of all of the infrastructure improvements with a condition approved by the planning board on the subdivision plan that says they cannot sell any lots and none of those lots will be granted a building permit until all of the infrastructure is completed. Mm -hmm. So that anybody buying a lot in the subdivision will understand they're gonna have to wait till all the infrastructure improvements are done before they can start building and they can decide whether to buy on that basis or not. If at any point in the construction, they, like say they put in all the road base, uh, the water line, they've, they've got enough where they're down to say $200,000 worth of improvements. Then they can come back to the board and say, we would now like to post a performance guarantee for the remaining improvements, get an amended plan that takes off that restriction, and then they can start selling lots and building houses in the subdivision. So that's a flexible mechanism that many towns use and it works particularly well for the developer, the town is protected. And with the caveat that just to protect in case a project goes belly up for a recession or any other reason, they are required to po post a performance guarantee for site stabilization. So all of the stormwater erosion controls, everything like that, they should provide say uh, $60,000 for site stabilization. Uh, that would be part of the condition uh, under which you would approve it. So I think that's a key issue. Or you can say, we think they need to have the full uh, performance guarantee of 600000 whatever the amount is that the engineer has, has confirmed. And then finally... Okay, George, on that item, are you saying that there's a scenario where they could do some of the site prep and start selling house lots? 
well, they would have to come in with a full performance guarantee for whatever improvements are remaining if they want to get the restriction on lot sales and building permits listed. Okay. They have proposed to do it under that arrangement. But with the design, you pretty much have to have the whole road in to the, and the fire pond. Done. That's the majority of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, and we would get a say if they came in and said, yeah, we built 100 feet of the road and we want to start issuing, you know, get permits. I mean, it, I would envision it perhaps as something like we're done and we it's we don't have time to do asphalt winter is settling in or whatever. Yeah. Would, mm -hmm. would we be willing to accept a performance guarantee on, on asphalt? Yeah. I'd imagine, I'd imagine you'd hold off on like final surface coat until all the construction is done. So we might yes. have to bond the, yes. the that's, final that's, inch and a half. But in order to save money, they may want to get half of it in, yeah. then come in and get a performance guarantee for the remainder. If just to we, save, we, cause we, they can't, they can't, build houses in there anyway until they get the, the road base in. So yeah. it's a flexible mechanism to help developers uh, make the project succeed. Because once you approve it, it's in, it's in the town's interest to make sure that it succeeds. Yeah. And not tipping my hand, but I'm not, it, we'll see when you come in um, on that one. But that but that's what it would be. There'd be some. Yeah. So they are proposing be. that and I just wanted to explain it. Yeah. But and, since we're still talking about this, um, what have we done? What do we typically do? This is new. In the past, the town has accepted a developer posting a personal performance bond, which is only a guarantee for a lawsuit. Uh, and so under the new ordinance, it specifies either cash deposit in the, in the accounts of the town, released upon approval of the road commissioner. That's one option. Mm -hmm. Second option is to say uh, an irrevocable letter of credit, which is a contract between a lending institution and the town that in the event of a developer default, then the town goes to the bank and the bank agrees to give the town the remaining money for the improvements, which is, but it costs the developer a monthly fee to have that arrangement. And then the third option is a conditional agreement uh, that, the board, they they agree we're not going to sell any lots and we're not going to get any building permits until all the infrastructure is done. And there is a fourth option. If they want to propose a bond or anything else, it goes to the town attorney for a review to make sure it protects the town's interests. They pay for the legal review of that. And if the town attorney, which has approved these other methods, if they agree with what they're proposing, then that could be approved by the board based on the legal opinion. So what if this does worst case goes belly up? Can we hold the discussion? Okay. I think I'd like to get, get the, the let's get through one. all five and then the conversation. <laughs> so I would just continue. Yeah. Sorry. That's the okay. last the last issue is okay, this application has been submitted in five different packages and and changes have been made throughout the process. So as you all know, I've seen Juliet, your pile, you know, there are like lots of different versions of the plan. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that we have one set that says final approval, the date of the last change, mm -hmm. a complete packet with all of the submissions. And then you have that, that pile is the official basis on which you're approving the subdivision. And everything else that went before that doesn't count other than to say, that's how you got there. <laughs> and right now, we are not gonna compile their final application. That's their responsibility. So you need to have the final plan set with all the supporting documentation in one package for your decision. Those are the five issue, key issues for me anyway. And you may have others. Are there any, you know, there'll be an opportunity to go if there's a particular line or whatever. Um, what I think we've, we've had a good review by um, Girl Palmer. Girl Palmer, thank you. Um, so I think a lot of the technical issues have been have been resolved, uh, but I, Ron has a good point about the the design of the the uh, culvert. Are there any others like that which may be, in, be part of the stream costing discussion? But are there any other? And if there's some a particular thing, we also this is not the only night we we're going to go through this. So there's another opportunity, but would like to at least get them out there because if we're going to ask the petitioner to change the design, you know, say, hey, we are concerned about the culvert. We are concerned about the fire pond. We do want to, we do want to see the easement around the detention pond. 
the earlier we tell them, the faster they can meet our requirements or request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, number six. So the last um, Goral Palmer um, comments back before the one we just got tonight. Number six in the packet. Can you give us the page number? Um, page 17. Talks about, and you mentioned it too um, in your comments, uh, George, talking about the runoff, the roadway. <clears throat> and um, pretty much lumping in. I think what um, Grange did is lumped in the roadway with the, uh, the wooded area at HSGA. Um, and uh, um, Grange's response is pretty much saying that um, they took an extremely conservative approach, um, pretty much disagreeing with Goral Palmer on that. Um, I am not an engineer, but I defer to the engineers. Um, and so I would like to hear what others think about that. But I, I would like to side with Goral Palmer and ask them to. Can we, to before, that. before we get that, because this is maybe more of a general question. There are a whole bunch of issues, technical issues that come out of the Goral Palmer's, I think 22. December report to you. Yeah. Then correct me if I'm wrong. You went back to them um, and said, we're going to do this, that, or the other thing, or we don't want to do this. And here's why. Yeah. And then we need to confirm since we just got Goral Palmer's thing that they either agreed with your third round of changes or fourth or 10th round, whatever it was, that questions like yours have been resolved. Uh, Cause I've got a whole bunch of the same kinds of questions yeah, no, so uh, or, uh, so I, that would be a question I would have is you've uh, in, a, in your response that you gave Mr. Thabard, you said, we disagree. Did you work with Goral Palmer and say, do they now agree with you? Yeah, I feel is like you're what looking at like the comments letter? from the first round. And there's a second round in which we just, we added a no. I believe that one number. What page were you on? 17, you said. Yep. I think this was from February. The responses, right? You were saying about the yeah. Drain, we're talking about the ditches. Yeah, we're talking about ditches here, right? That's this is the one about the ditches. The, you didn't want to count the uh, lots in the forested area. Uh, I didn't want to split those out into a separate subcatchment. Yeah, that, I, I, that came up a couple, two or three times. Yes, and, and, that's and, what she's referring and his to. his point so, there was yeah, 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 that's in terms of stabilizing those ditches. And that was his concern with the ditch sizing. There it wasn't the amount. Of, it wasn't the volume of runoff. It was are those ditches sized appropriately for the amount of runoff coming? He did through? have a concern about volume of runoff too. But from a, from a stability standpoint, not like uh, making it to the pond or, and and so in response to that, we've added notes that follow the DEP's best management practice for all contractors that when you have ditches <clears throat> over five percent slope or whatever it is that are catching larger than five acres. You put down an erosion control mat, and that's how you stabilize that ditch. Otherwise, you can grass line them. Like it's just kind of generic. That's that's it's that's part of it. But this comment specifically is about combining the peak flow from the roadway um, with the large wooded HSGA, which I don't think. In, so in addition, John and and George mentioned this. There are some things that were not worked out completely between Goral and Grange. Well, my question is that there was a, there was a, you submitted something, Goral responded. You responded to Goral's response and they responded to that. And, and now the third response, we're down to one thing. So the question I want to be sure of is, did you satisfy Goral Palmer's were you there were things you agreed with and you made changes there were things you disagreed with you threw a political comment in there that we'll talk about later um but is goral palmer satisfied with all of that they've done except for what they put in the letter we got today if, if that makes sense because we've gone through several iterations as i read goral palmer's letter they're saying we're down to one issue which mm -hmm. you guys have just seen tonight if that's the case, a lot of my concerns and, and Julie, uh, Juliet, your concerns would go away. And that's, so my question is, did you, after you sent, you responded, did you then follow up where you said, yes, we're gonna do that. 
and Carl Palmer said, yes, we looked at what you did and it's good. Or you said, no, we're not going to do it. And they said, okay, we understand your reasoning why you're not going to do it. And, but we, we think you, you may be more conservative. And so therefore it's okay. Does, and then are we down to just one issue or is that, and that's what I, we need to know before we, we go a heck of a lot further. Right. My only experience with the process so far is I send in a response. He's like, just like with that question six, that was a response to my response. So I feel like if he had another response, he would have included it on this, but otherwise I, that's all I can speak to. And that's just something, Mr. Farge, we just need to confirm with. Yeah. Your and I would, I would also assume, but we, he issued this today mm -hmm. in order to be ready for your meeting tonight. So I don't think he had time to go through an analysis of all the changes that they've made and they've satisfactorily addressed. I can certainly follow up with Will. I'll be talking to him about another subdivision probably tomorrow and can make sure that uh, this indicates that they have addressed everything else. Yeah, I would appreciate that. And also, like, I would love to hear what you guys think about that, this comment specifically. Um, that is the one biggest one where I see that um, the applicant is disagreeing with the professional engineer's response. Um, and so we, you know, we're using the professional engineer as a good reference, right? But we also um, can make our own decisions too. So, yeah. So I've added that to the list, not to... And so, you know, we've got these things to discuss. I think it'd be very useful to have Goral Palmer just say, oh, no, that was a new one I came up with. And they, I don't like, I don't think the others are correct. Or I'm sad. I've got their response. I've looked at their response. I, I agree with them. Or, well, assuming you're going to be making your final decision, what we can do is uh, he'll review uh, their, the submission that they, that they provide in response to this last comment and then they can give a final letter saying they've met all the concerns that we've expressed or not or, or not. these are the ones that or we not still that would be great concerned. to hear from yeah. yeah yeah that's easy okay are there any more like that i mean it's a good time to to get feedback to goral palmer as well that other things that we're interested in then Again, we're, we're going to take another shot at this next month. So, you know, you know we want to get as much done as we can tonight and then keep going next George, month. You, yes. You so I will get a letter from Will Haskell verifying acceptance of all proposed changes. Please. Um, and that's not to say if we disagree that we can't ask them to do, you know, the original thing anyway. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then if we're ready, then we can give you some more time to think. We've got six issues, stream crossing, fire pond, sizing, detention pond, easement, uh, the completion uh, issue, and then a complete package. And I guess I'd like to start with complete package because to me, that's a no brainer that you all should do that. I don't know that I'm open to discussion, but that's just something that I think we should get, as, as Mr. Tabar said, um, five years from now. Hopefully you are much more successful than that, but two years from now. Um, 30 days from 30 now. C205 is not the same, you know, as kind of dealing with all the, all the uh, uh, change dates on it and all that other kind of stuff. Is that just something yeah, we're going to expect that so before we give final approval is there any other one of these that we want to take uh, and and again i outline the issues and obviously you want to have to give the applicant an opportunity to respond to those i just did yeah yeah i feel like with the, the plan set this one has gone on a few more renditions than most so typically i i do just provide one large plan set and if three plans change you here's your three new plans and carry on, but I feel like this one has gotten a little more convoluted that one full package. Yeah, that would be good. What's another 800 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> so I've taken that concern, if everyone agrees, that concern is gone. I want to talk stream crossings, fire pond, detention pond easement. Which, that one's easy. That, that one, I just got the surveyed plan today with the new <laughs> easement around the under drain soil filter. So, so before next meeting, we'll see that and with see the that. full complete package. Yep. What about the fire chief approval 
This is detention pond. That's, oh, that's I apologize. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Are we okay that when we see that plan, we can check that concern off? Yeah. It is gone. Fire pond seems to be the next topic. Yeah, talk, talk about the design on that and how you're going to meet the requirements to maintain that water level. Yeah, I feel like that's an easy thing to take care of with a um, – even a note saying, you know, it's on the subdivision to keep that thing full. I feel like the fire chief's concerns are valid in the standpoint of last summer. Our drought mm -hmm. was absurd. But those droughts, those ponds, I would be willing to bet a significant amount of money are not lined. Right. That they're groundwater fed because the groundwater did drop a good six feet last year. But people's pools didn't go empty. Right. And every wet pond didn't go empty because that's how they're designed to hold water. Yeah, I think the chief would disagree with you. You and I have that conversation. If they're lined, right? If they're lined, lined. If they're lined. If it's functioning as a pool rather than a, a ground-fed pond. Okay. The groundwater did drop significantly. My well went dry, right? That I know. It dropped nine feet in my backyard. So, yeah, fire ponds that are groundwater-fed. So what are you using for lining material? We're doing about 18 inches of clay, I think, is what I put in there. Okay. So we've we've lined this thing. And people's pools didn't run empty out last year, right? So that's right. that's how – ponds pools function they don't they don't run dry okay following up with that is there you did a study to say I there's did. Well, so yeah there's a very generic not generic but it's a um conservative assumptions there when you say you know the amount of rain we get every year as as state of maine we get about 40 i think six inches and then if you look back at actually new gloucester has one of the few uh evaporation logs and they average about 26 inches of evaporation every year. Obviously, the vast majority of the year, nothing's evaporating. The other nice thing about these fire ponds is um, if you look at the way those volumes are analyzed, the top four feet doesn't count because of fr a freezing. So even in a drought of all droughts, if our pond dropped three feet, the water level, that the water volume that we're required, that 120,000 gallons, is four feet below the top of that berm anyways. It's, it's two feet off the ground and four feet above that. That counts as our storage volume. So we have a hundred, and I think I even oversized it by 60,000 gallons. So we're 180,000 gallons of proposed storage, four feet below the top of surface, two feet up off the bottom. So and no matter what the drought, when that summer and that, when that fall rain, winter melt, spring rain comes around, I'm confident that we're going to get 46 inches of rain to fill up no matter what drought we have that summer. So by putting them in this fire pond, it allows you to not have the expense of the fire suppression system. Well, that's the house. irony here is that we originally provided, we, we said we wanted to do fire sprinklers. Mm -hmm. But there's a, a sentence in the ordinance that does say that you can reduce the volume of the fire pond, but you can't get rid of it. So we could argue that it could be reduced down to zero, but you still have to provide some kind of, you can't just go and stick a fire hydrant in the ground and say, yep, there's right. our zero. Nobody's going to approve that. So now we weren't really given a choice in the matter if we either had to do a fire pond or underground storage cistern. So we scratched the, the sprinklers because why would you do both? But I think the irony is, is that I think every fire chief would agree that sprinklers are safer <laughs> than a fire pond. We would have preferred the previous, but that option was taken from us. Well, because the, the reason I asked that question is because the liability on the homeowner that is going to be purchasing, they're, they're going to want to really have the insurance that that fire pond is going to protect my property. Sure. It, my question is, aside from your betting on that it'll never go run dry, is there a way to um, scientifically, well, one, I'd like to get the chief's sign off on this before, you know, before the next meeting so that he, at least he knows what's going to be in the ground out there and that he's okay with that. And he's not a, hydrologist is there a way to about goral palmer it, well i was going to ask have goral palmer look yeah. well goral palmer did point out this issue and suggested that they get you get calculations they provided the calculations i'm assuming they submitted those to will haskell and i will make sure in the follow-up letter that that has been addressed okay. i will ask okay. i like that and I've, and I've spoken with geologists who and they're like this isn't a thing like that's yeah. It isn't a thing. But yeah, he's like, we don't, uh, it's a lined pond. I, you, <laughs> what do you want us to say? <laughs> and just to Alan's comment about, you know, this is an ISO rating of 120,000 gallons for a fire pond. So if they design it according to ISO standards, theoretically, that should address any concerns. Okay. Yeah, because in, in those standards, they even address 
droughts and, and freezing, right? But we freeze more than we, we evaporate. I, I just think it having Goral Palmer say that I looked at it and I agree and the chief say, we know that there will be a fire pond at the end of that drive and we're okay with it. Um, I mean, I, we've been very good about including the chief and um, road commissioner and these kinds of things. And I, I think, and I know he's worked with you and you've worked with him. Which and we is, have which, submitted to the fire chief yeah. and the road commissioner these most yeah, updated We have. Points. This has been good, but just make sure that I would be very comfortable if he would email or something that just said, look at I, if the hydrology is correct, I'm okay with that fire pond at where it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like we would even take, I mean, cause again, hydrology doesn't really apply in a lined pond. I think the, the, uh, catch all, I mean, we have, we have those water trucks that you can fill up pools with, with, so if there's a season and a lot of these things actually have rulers in them that once the water level hits a certain point, you can go and fill it up. Is that in your HOA doc that says when it reaches a certain point? They will no, that's what I'm up. saying. This is something that could be, if this is really a concern that we want to say, this has to be locked in at a certain elevation. Like that's something that can be very, it's not, the studies aren't going to tell you anything. I think if we get the engineer to say that he, which sure. also he would bet with you on that, the chief's yeah, okay. with it. And if the chief would like to have a ruler in there, you know, again, we we're, there are ponds that aren't working in town. Uh, and so we just want to make sure that we don't put 13 homes. Yeah. Well, I don't love that. And, and it, there's nothing there. And there's, I don't know if the subdivision next door has it, but yeah. Uh, okay. So did the calcs get submitted to? They're in the back of your most recent yeah. package. It's, just a, it's literally this big, it's the area amount of runoff volume of that pond, how much is available, how much is evaporating and throughout a year rather because it's kind of a tricky model it's not like usually all these two 25 and 100 year storms that's just a single storm event we're talking about how much water is making into that pond over the course of a year right. and how much water is leaving that pond over the course of a year okay does that answer the concern if we chief is okay and the uh haskins will haskins okay with the calcs we're okay yeah mm -hmm. okay um I guess completion dollars, maybe stream crossing seems like a more complicated issue. So, you want to keep leave that for off. last? I was going to say, we, we, we <laughs> let's punt that to next month. But, how about uh, I think we should? I don't know, we need to it. discuss uh, that. Yeah. Well, no, we do, but I mean, we punt it next. We we could discuss you want to discuss it oh. tonight? Oh, yes, well, maybe generally at least. <laughs> sure, this but, is this is let's do it last. Is okay, the grand finale. Uh, so completion, yeah, I don't think it's fair to them if if. If we come up with new stuff next month, yeah, right. To, to not um, know that makes sense to me. <laughs> thoughts on this. Um, so completion, uh, additional agreement, additional agreement. Um, the request or the thought is to allow this conditional agreement that would say at some point in time, the uh, petitioner at Deer Creek could come in and say, "We're done." With this this work, and we have X thousands of dollars left, we will put in a guarantee that is matches what the town requires for whatever is left. And so, um, and that would be approved by the planning board. Well, it it we would agree to a conditional um, whatever it is agreement today that we could do that they would come in and say we're 10 percent done and we want it or we're 90 all we have left is a surface coat of asphalt that's going to cost us x amount of money and that's what we'll we'll bond or a letter of credit or personal guarantee or whatever we want are we okay with that or do we want them to complete 100 percent because i think oh, that's I the just, alternative just think historically the one that comes to mind is ruby lane that's still being developed and they uh, had the, the amount of money was put in escrow to finish that road because right now it's still it is not built to the specs but the money is in escrow to uh, meet the requirements so that's you know that that is an option but there it sounds like they're submitting a different option yeah, so right now we are considering that they don't provide any sort of bond or escrow or anything. That I mean, they can I read to you the language of the ordinance? Sure. sure. It's just one paragraph. It says conditional agreement. 
uh, this is 6.34C, a conditional agreement, if acceptable in lieu of a performance guarantee, shall be endorsed by the planning board on the final plan mm -hmm. and shall provide that no lot or parcel of land may be conveyed and that no permit may be issued by the code officer for any building on any lot in the subdivision until, until the completion of all required improvements unless a performance guarantee is approved by the planning board for all remaining work needed to complete the improvements. Under a conditional agreement, the applicant shall submit a performance guarantee meeting the requirements of the ordinance to cover erosion and sedimentation controls and site stabilization prior to release of the recording mylar. Okay, so they need to submit um, something for the stormwater piece. Yes, and they would give an estimate. The engineer, peer review engineer, inspecting engineer would approve that amount, and then they would be good to go. Okay, so the risk is the rest of the project if so something is there, happens. Is right? there anything we're at being asked to do right now? Or we're just on notice that they may want to... They're, you, they're asking you to approve a conditional agreement for this project. We have to do that As their the final start, plan. Of the condition. We don't necessarily have to say it's come in at 50% or come in at, at surface code only, correct? Or should we... Conditional agreement it? is no performance guarantee other than erosion and sedimentation control and site stabilization with a condition on the plan that no lot can be sold and no building permits issued until the road is completed. Can I, can I just sure. kind of explain the thought process behind that? Because yeah. I, I used to be Will for Scarborough. And the, the idea is, because the whole performance release, the whole bond is to say that, especially if it's going to be a town-owned road, that we can't just abandon you with the half-owned road, half-done road. This is going to be a private road, so it's kind of a little different. I think the bigger concerns are when you start selling lots, you've got a resident stuck on that first lot or in the back that's just got a dirt road and somebody walks away. What is that guy's, mm -hmm. what's his recourse to yeah. get that road finished and get his subdivision properly done? This takes care of that in terms of you can't even sell those lots until you get back there and get the road done. And if you are going to say, we want to sell these lots, you then bond what's left. To but, get them their final product, but that road will not be 100% complete it, before you. So it really is well as a developer. I don't think you want it that way. That's what we're saying. You're so we'll do the deteriorate that right, surface. Right. So we'll do the heavy lifting. They'll do. They'll do the sub. They'll do the sub base, the stormwater ponds, do all the excavating, and I'd imagine they'll put down that base coat, and then they're going to come in and say, "All right, we want to sell some lots," or even before the pavement, they might say, "We want to sell some lots. Can we bond the pavement?" Right. So that if these houses get sold and we walk away, they can then come and say, give us that money to pave our road. Exactly. So what, yeah, likely it would be just a pavement there. If you ever, if we, if anything, they could just say, let's just go ahead and do it. The surface code, I'd imagine they'd have to, because again, that gives them a better product at the end. Because if there's construction, malls driving over it, <coughs> excavators getting loaded and out, it's going to beat up that road. So odds are they'll save that final surface coat until they've got some house lots sold. Yeah. And mostly built. Well, and I'd like to define at some point in time so that we know what that's going to be. If that's at Binder, mm -hmm. then that's one thing. If, but, you know, you drive on Bowie Hill subdivision now, it's still stone. Mm -hmm. And houses are, must be getting pretty close to being finished. Right. So I don't know. And I I heard about a subdivision today where the code enforcement officer was slip sliding all over because houses are being built and. You know, we're not even there. Yeah, it's right. Sand. Sure. It's not gravel. It's Which sand. Ones, yeah. So I guess I would, if we do this, I'd like to kind of say, okay, what what point? <coughs> don't come in before this point. You know, and so if, whatever that may be, because uh, <clears throat> we also have before my time, but I think quite a while ago, you have Granite Ridge, which is defunct. It's, it's defunct, but there's houses back there you know, <laughs> on that road. And so if you haven't driven back there lately, you're, you know, those Jeep advertisements where they go up over the big <laughs> That's what you're driving on on that road. And so I want to, we want to, and I know it's a different age, but we want to make sure that's right. not an issue. Right. Are we okay with that concept? As whatever defining wherever that may be. We can and find it in two phases. One that you get a permit at this stage, you get no, all you have to prove at this point is a conditional agreement that says they can't sell any lots or may get any building permits until all the uh, improvements are completed. 
That would be the only decision that you make at this point. When and if they want to start selling lots, that's when you have the discussion. Okay, how much is remaining? Has that all been inspected and certified by the inspecting engineer? And how much are you proposing to bond with us before we release the restriction? And that would be the CEO? The no, be, it would be the road commissioner and the uh, and, and Goral Palmer. Inspecting oh, so, right, so right now... We would do what you said, and if they built everything, yep, and then sold lots, they're good to go. Then no one's going to come yeah. back. But if they want, if they want to do anything different, they come back and say to you, "We want to now." It's right in that language. Yeah, this yeah. just gives them permission to come back later. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah, and the other, like the other protection, to, the other protection, right. just to highlight, is the erosion control thing. So again, if these guys went in there and blazed a road through there and walked away, you have the money to go in there and stabilize the thing, right? right? So worst case scenario. It looks better than it does now. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> more importantly, it doesn't, We're take it. Yeah. That's more importantly, it doesn't cause environmental damage. Yeah. yeah. From an environmental standpoint, not aesthetically, it'd be very similar to what it looks like. Are we we so don't really need a we don't we don't need a motion on that at this point. Can I we? ask a question? Sure. Do we um, need to define all improvements, or is that? Like, well, the, I would, my thought would be whatever is on the plan. It's whatever we improve. Everyone yeah, understand we can what we that can means? specify that in the conditions of approval. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Per the plan, I would say per the plan. Oh, we wouldn't have that on the plan, but in the no. notice of decision, you will, you can put the conditional agreement requires completion of all improvements. Parentheses. Ding, 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 ding. Fire I just farm. didn't know if all improvements sure. is, is a typical term to yeah. to vendors. But again, that's the that's the language of the ordinance. Right. Then we need to specify in the decision exactly what it includes. So, for example, a performance guarantee, a letter of credit. Mm -hmm. Typically, we list these are the components that have to be completed, including the fire pond, because you want to make, you know, that's not a typical improvement, right. but you would put that in there. Okay. So at this point, we don't, no action is required. We just indicate yeah. to the, to the, that we're to the applicant, to that. you understand that's what they're proposing. Okay. Yeah, totally. You will consider it. Yeah. Okay. So the answer is yes, we will consider it. <laughs> they should prepare a final plan that has that as a condition. Specific. Exactly. I can include that right as a condition on the final subdivision plot. That's yeah. what the ordinance says. Yeah. 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 It must be on the plan. Okay. One last question, just because there's a, there's an ounce of flesh less than this horse. Do we give them guidance and say we don't want you to come back until you have binder down? No, and not tonight. But they may not come back at all. But okay. Yeah, we just wait till they come back and they, they said say so no. We we <laughs> just want to put sand down. Can we start selling house lots? And we're going to say okay. no. I got you. Or they're well, going to sure, say we've done place. everything but the buy. You know, except for the final coat. Is that okay? And we're going to say yes. And and again, if they come back <laughs> in and it's like the other side like that. If they come back in and the inspecting engineer code officer go out and it's like the road that you just described, oh, yeah. you say, no, you can't start selling lots. Yeah. Right. Well, Fix the road, yeah. then come back and talk to us. I got you. I'm good. We've learned from our past experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good te it's a good teacher. Yes, it is. As long as we're paying attention. And if you approve Grand <laughs> Ridge, I'm not mad at you. Um, <laughs> okay. So I think that takes us to uh, – Stream crossings is the next big issue out so I'm there. I'm saying that's the last. That's the last, last of those thing. that, unless, again, if there's other things that you all have. Uh, have. Just just well, so on, while you're looking on the stream crossing, I think I finally got my head wrapped around this and understand. It looks like we're putting a 60 inch foot culvert in the bottom of the uh, that ravine. And that stream will just be going through the 60 inch culvert and then it's and it's long and then the rest of it's getting just filled in yeah so we're just so technical. we're just yeah. like kind of filling in the ravine mm -hmm. and and i think that's why it's taking me a while to understand <laughs> the design because it's not what i was anticipating and so i guess i have a question to the rest of the board is that what you guys were anticipating and if the uh, not the D, is it the DEP? Who's yeah, it? DEP. If the DEP says, yeah, that's fine, um, is that fine in your mind for what we, when we walked the site and saw where the streams going to get crossed, 
Is, is you okay with that? Excuse me. I am. Uh, why am I going to be? Well, some people would say, why would we be questioning the DEP? I actually. I mean, they, they are the professional. Yes, but I actually wanted to see. Did you include the NERPA permit? You say in here that it was included. I don't have originally. That was like two that. submissions ago, or three. And that was just the the permit by rule application. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, it was in an earlier package. But with all of these things we talked about, like the updated one. Um, the culvert change and all that stuff. Is it really hasn't changed. I mean, I, I think I bumped it up. I think I started out as a 60-inch, brought it down to a 48 because we went and measured the stream bottom. And the rule is it's supposed to be one and a half times the width of the stream, 30-inch <coughs> stream, right? So that's a – you're talking 48. Because it meanders a little bit, we bumped it up a bit. Um, and then the rest of those notes and design standards are pretty much taken right from the Army Corps, saying how you redo the bottom. You strip out what's in the bottom of the stream, put it aside. Once you've remade the channel bed, throw that stream back in. Mm -hmm. And the, it's an open bottom culvert, right? So if that stream, it's not a full 60 inch culvert, it's just an arch that goes over the top. So it'll be a natural looking stream through the bottom of that with the footers outside the, the I mean, that, that stream right now is a very defined, like your typical seasonal stream that's got a nice swath right through the middle of it and 18 inches deep 30 inches wide so we're going to go up and over all of that obviously we're going to, have to rebuild a section of it because making a culvert sway like that's an interesting construction project but this is essentially a culvert <coughs> it's a big culvert so from a design standpoint it's not like it's a structural once you backfill that thing like you said the fill is it's a significant amount of fill right like it's, it's, it, it shows up on the um Grading plan. Yeah. The first plan in this new set. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but what, what I want you to look at is the plan. So, you know, this ravine drops from 176 feet foot contour down to 160. And then down at the bottom of that, the, this plan, you know, on the plan, that culvert, it's like, you know, yeah, teeny. Yeah. And, and it's so it's 60 inch culvert that long. And then the rest of this is just filled in mm -hmm. to get to get we the cut, road we up cut to those top banks a little bit to minimize just the slope, obviously, and to yeah, minimize the cut, fill. Cut a little. Yeah, see, the, the ridge is at like 176, and the road does go down. Yeah, we had to cut it in. I mean, that, that, the, whole, the whole premise there is to help with the existing drainage problem, right? We had to cut that road down so that it could grade at least a half a percent to fix a problem that was happening in those folks' backyard. What is the depth of fill? It's like Six feet, five feet, something like that. Above the culvert? Yeah. Six feet. Yeah. It's, well, well it's a, maybe five. The road, the road surface appears to bottom out about 172. What's the top of the road at? Yeah, there's one, 172 kind of over the stream and it comes comes back <clears> up. <throat> and then the stream's at 160, so it's about 12 feet. No, the stream is at. Uh, oh, I see what you're looking at here. Yeah, about 10 feet up. Yep. It goes down. I think it's probably more of a 170 in the middle of that. I think that's a 170 I see in the middle. So oh, it's okay. like eight feet. Yeah. You got five feet of fill over top of that over. Well, covert's only like. Three feet, feet tall, high. three feet tall. Three figure feet if it's a 60 inch, you got a 36 foot, 36 inch radius yeah. if it's a six foot. So anyway. Um, I mean, what are your what are your thoughts, Ron, on this? Like I don't know. I can I guess it is done all the time, but it just it, well, 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 we, we did the all. we did the walk. We when we did the walk, we I think we were there and discussed that we wanted something that created less disturbance in that ravine. And I think when you look at it from a like a five years from now standpoint, when you walk back in there, right now there's a, a dam that the loggers built across that thing, mm. right? There's mm. got 12 yeah. inch rusty culverts. And that's that that's there. And as part of this project, we're removing that. So from from a just a big picture standpoint, what we're proposing is an improvement upon what is there. We are yeah. environmentally and functionally improving the, the the that stream and that it's, it's an intermittent stream that i mean i guess what is your environmental concern that we're losing 
ravine volume? Just the impact, probably. To what? The existing. Well, you have to have something, though, correct? Existing what? What would be an alternative? You'd have to have culvert, right? You'd have to have that bigger, bigger culvert, I guess. Well, I think <clears throat> my thought would be just to jump in here is that if Gar Girl Palmer has reviewed all, I mean, we've, they've had an engineer design it. We've paid an engine. They will pay an engineer to review it. Uh, my thought is, you know, I'm not the engineer who can say it should be an 80 inch culvert or, you know, whatever it may be. What did Goral Palmer, how did they? Number two, talk page about 17. This right yeah, there. I, they had asked that I clarify the elevations on those footers because the Army Corps says it's got to be two feet below. So I stripped the actual inverts off of the detailed drawing and made it a little more generic and saying you just got to have it two feet. This footer's got to extend two feet below the bottom of the surface, of, at the bottom of that stream. Okay. And my general comment continues, which is, <coughs> girl, you know, girl, the things that were, there was a disagreement. Yeah. Uh, we still have a disagreement because I've got a lot of comments sure. that, you know, if girl Palmer has looked at them and they're okay with it, there might be questions better, but it's you know, like you talk about, we don't have any berms or, but you, then you say we have minimum berms. So what did I say I don't want, wait, hold on. Let's get, but yeah, I like where you were going. Um, because I am also about this question. So could we add number two, the stream to the list of Goral specific questions? Have you we'll like, also has, have the Army Corps and the DEPs? I mean, have those. they have they adequately responded to Goral's <coughs> concerns? I will so follow up. Okay. Yeah, and then we still we also have the Corps and, and DEP or D, DEPs come in. DEP said so. so we're they're they're good with it. So we also did, you know, need to see the cores. And then it, you know, if they're happy, Goral's happy. And the core typically gets excited about vernal pools, but stream crossings, I haven't really seen much of a problem. Um, but going back to the NERPA permit, so when um, mm. sorry, when did you submit that, the final to NERPA to DP? The permit uh, application five weeks ago, four weeks ago. Okay. Five, six, seven. Do we have a call? I haven't seen it. Where is it, guys? Do I have it? So it was just an updated form. I think I, I included it like eight months ago in the original, and literally all I did was change my cover letter and, <coughs> and a note. I forwarded by email their submissions when they came in okay. <clears throat> and then posted it on the website. So you should have it in one of your emails. Okay. And so Five I'm assuming ago. it was the December 7th. Right. Sounds about right. So if, if you look, search your email December 7th, you probably have it. Actually, that email printout I sent you in this recent package has my original correspondence with them. What I saw, unless I'm <clears> missing, <throat> the last thing we just saw, it just says from DP, it says something about riprap. One line, that's it. Did you guys get more than that? Again, they originally submitted a DEP permit by rule application for the stream crossing. That was submitted in one of the many packets. A long time ago. Yeah. Yes. What uh, I'm, I'm asking I'm thinking for probably is... for the December meeting. And then they submitted most recently an email from DEP commenting on that application. Right. But what Charlie is saying is that he updated the NERPA permit and submitted the NERPA permit per Goral's comments that, that you guys needed to add the, um, you're taking out the existing culvert, those impacts. And I haven't seen that. And that's what I'm asking for. I'm not sure. What are you asking for? The original... The Not updated, the you 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 filed an original DEP permit by rule for the stream. Could process. I, in the interest of time, you've we've heard the request that, that we need. Could you, if you've sent it before, please resend it? And that should be part of the final packet. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. So please sure. just, if there's other things, now, but please just resend it. Yeah, and then also, um, you said the response from the DEP that we just got had your submittal with it. I didn't see that, so no, I didn't say that. I said oh. their response acknowledged, "Hey, we've gotten your submittal." They don't send you anything formal. They just say so. It's literally a printout of the email she sent me back saying, "We've made the changes to your permit. You're good." So just include all that all correspondence that. with DEP, and and when you get the Thank core you. stuff, all of that. Okay, in the interest of time, we do have some other topics. Is there anything else we 
Um, there are a lot of comments that have I said that I have, and I if if we don't, if Goral comes back and says nope, I didn't cover everything, then I'll uh, we'll send Mr. Tabarge and planning board a list of all my concerns and you'll have them in advance in the next meeting. But if if they're satisfied, that I guess that's the question. I I I agree with you on that. Oh, yep. Is, are we ready to move on to the? Can we send these guys home? Yeah. All right. You kind of you got more, an idea of, more minutes of what we got hockey at nine. Don't want to do it myself. <laughs> Goodbye, Charles. Goodbye, Mr. Burnham. <laughs> that was his joke. Thank you. That was my joke. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just waiting for the opportunity to open. Yeah. He was, <laughs> and I gave it to him. So. Uh, <laughs> What were you thinking? I don't know. Need somebody to sit close to me and kick me. Okay, so again, we've got next and longer if we don't get what we need uh, next month, and we'll we'll keep going until we do. So, uh, but, but I think this was a good start. We've got an idea. And Mr. Barnes, all my little comments, I will just send them to you. You know, if if you come back and go up on us, says, nope, we're not. I'm not. You didn't look at all that stuff or didn't comment on it. And I'm sure others have the same. So if you have comments that were not covered, uh, please give them to them. Okay, so before us, keeping this thing moving, our next thing, item six, it is a discussion on uh, what we're going to do next with land use articles. So we started with five, and we will take, I guess, the easy ones first or whatever it may be. At, we had that public meeting back a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we elected to drop uh, the articles on affordable housing, uh, as, as you recall. So uh, just a quick discussion about that. I would like, we probably need to continue doing something. Uh, we've missed the opportunity, obviously, with this town meeting. What I would I recommend we do is that we take it the next meeting, our April, we could take some time, figure out how we want to get there from here. Uh, we got some guidance from the state that probably in Georgia. Did you want to speak first? Am I taking? <laughs> I don't want you to have to repeat everything I said. No, I was just going to quickly recap how we got here and where we are. Just if, if, it, would be, if it would be helpful. Right. If you mm -hmm. want to dive right in, you're. No, pretty, I want to. Okay. Please. So, first, let me just point out that you did conduct a public hearing you referred to on February 15th. And the purpose of that meeting was to solicit additional public input and consider whether any final changes should be made. <clears throat> you had reviewed the new draft uh, rule from DECD about the affordable housing, which you also referred to, John, uh, and you heard uh, proposed revisions, uh, support for the proposed revisions uh, to the Resource Protection District criteria and boundaries. But at the public hearing that occurred at Eureka on February 15th, you did hear concerns about uh, beginning with Habitat 6 plus as a criterion. The board, you heard questioning the need for, to amend the ordinance to state that a town meeting vote is needed for street acceptance. Some people question, why do you even need to do that? It's in the state law. As a result of public input and your discussion, you voted to recommend the following changes to the select board. Uh, amend drafts for part 1A and 1B to the, delete the word errors and uh, leaving the language describing needed changes to the zoning map as being based on inaccurate mapping. What I just handed out to you tonight includes those wording revisions uh, in 1A and 1B that you discuss, discussed and decided at your meeting on February 15th. Um, you also re were going to recommend to the select board holding off on submitting proposed parts 2A and 2B for town meeting consideration until the rules for administration of LD 2003, also known as chapter 672, are finalized by the state. Uh, we uh, then thought that the select board was make, going to make a decision on the Warren articles on February 28th, which was last night. Uh, and a second public hearing has been scheduled for March 22nd at 6.30 p.m at the Eureka Center again. And the purpose of that public hearing is not to consider changes, but to just simply give the public the opportunity to dive into any questions they have about what they're gonna be voting on. Uh, 
And the purpose of the public hearing, as I said, will be in, in, so, solely for informational purposes. And that public hearing will also satisfy legal requirements for amendment of the ordinance. And finally, we did have been sending out the last couple of days uh, a letter on the resource protection changes to 480 individual landowners affected by the proposed changes. Uh, and so I would just clarify for tonight's purposes of discussion, as I understand, uh, it's not that you are going to review and make any changes in anything tonight. It's just simply to give you an update in preparation for the public hearing on uh, March 22nd. So you don't need to approve anything tonight. You don't need to consider any changes. And then finally, I would say, and John, uh, I think indicated or uh, that last night at the select board meeting, they asked us to make one change to this. And that is to drop the beginning with habitat uh, criterion six plus on part one B. And, and the select board members who are here tonight, uh, I think are here to just simply answer any questions that you might have on that decision. So that decision last night, was that a consensus? Or was it an actual motion by the board? I would defer to the chairman of the of the select board to clarify so that. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was a consensus. I think I it was too. Actually, you didn't vote. It didn't. When I walked away, I hadn't voted. Yeah. It's consensus, right? So that means everyone but approved granted, it. There was an awful lot of vote, discussion. Because the actual vote on articles to go on the warrant is March fourth. Um, so I guess the, the next question I have is the decision of the planning board, whatever we are recommending, it's being submitted to the selectmen for articles and the final decision for an article to be presented to the townspeople is the responsibility of the selectmen, correct? Yeah. Yes. We make a, we make a recommendation. Right. So, um, are you all finished? Yep. Um, good. Well, I guess what I'd like to do is we need to get to resource protection. What I'd like to do is, George, recap be before we get to that, is recap where we are in affordable housing and kind of get a consensus here going forward that we probably need to do something. What we had planned to do, or maybe not, uh, <laughs> but what we plan to do may not work given the guidance, probably doesn't work given the guidance we've been getting from the state. Uh, and that was, as you recall, we were going to do a 1A, excuse me, a 2A and a 2B, uh, 2A being closely aligned with the comp plan, uh, but the guidance we've gotten from them, and, and we voted not to go forward last time, basically said that, uh, you know, you have to allow single families or a standalone house versus an apartment. So we can get into the details of that, but what I'd like to do is, is kind of talk through going forward with that, how do we get it to an election? Well, I, think I would uh, like at the last meeting where we kind of got to at the end, but we had to kind of put it, table it. Um, I thought Ann had come, and especially in light with what the information we've gotten back that George has passed on, but uh, what Ann had kind of come up with at the end, I thought was a really good foundation for just like one Warren article because uh, it allowed for like two accessory dwellings on a single family house um, or one on a duplex, which a lot we feel I think aligns with the comp plan. But then it also protects us from the state requiring us to allow three full houses on a lot by requiring that type of situation the lots to get bigger basically if you want two full houses you have to have four acres if you want three full houses you have to have six and i think that was a start and i my concern the reason i voted no at that point no i agree but we shouldn't have, yeah we weren't getting to a point where we could have it at the town meeting yeah oh uh, i think you know trying to reformulate something for uh, like maybe the budget hearing um, would be uh, doable and, and, and it would meet the state um, time frame. But I think um, that would be, you know, where I'd like to see us head would be maybe 
try to formulate one question that would address all those concerns um, and then also not leave us kind of hanging mm-hmm. where all of a sudden we don't do anything and we have to follow the state law. So now we can have three full houses on two acre law. When is the budget hearing? It's a June, vote. early June. For the school board vote school is what board. we're talking Yeah. And uh, uh, other comments? School budget is, yeah. I think it's June 13th. Yeah, middle of June. All right, so the idea is to push it to June, have a plan to put in front of the voters? Well, the, yeah, the idea would be to get a Warren article approved to uh, vote on at, when we vote on the school budget. It, it, my, con- my concern is, I will quit talking about others' talk, is that's basically two months from now, right? April, May, three months. So <coughs> to put it into the pri- – and, you know, we, we did a great job, I think, of public hearings, public meetings, surveys. You know, we got the word out there. I, and not to say that we have to spend another year doing it, but if we're going to make changes – I mean, that's a significant change from what we've been planning to do. I think we probably ought to take some time to – develop that I, I guess what i'm saying is don't rush to a june a june election yeah. and if you go to an election it's a paper ballot and mm-hmm. you don't have a chance to really explain it and, and that but that's my concern about an election so so now it uh, so if we didn't meet that time frame we could be we could go a couple of months having to just follow the state law with no protections in it. That is order. that is a possibility. I just purely a, a timeline contribution because that would be in a paper ballot that's a referendum special town meeting. The final wording of whatever question has to be to the town clerk sixty days before the vote. So really, we have one month. Exactly. Yes. So I, I just wanted to point that. Out. Oh, I appreciate that. That's. Um, I, I just, Alan, I'm keeping you from talking. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the, there's a time constraint there, and I don't think that we have the option to have public meetings to educate the town residents about it. I just don't think that we can do it for June. I really don't. And then the question is, do we shoot for June? Do we? Because the argument all along is that we have to do something or we follow the state law. Now, do we not do anything until the November election, until the April town meeting of next year? And then, well, when we had we have had public hearings on it, and some of how we're changing this is based on what we've heard at public hearings. You know, I feel, I feel like we're making progress and honing in on it. Maybe the June meeting is aggressive, but um, I don't know. I don't know if it's ready to throw in the towel yet, or maybe it is. But I don't know. Maybe, I, mean, I, I feel think like we should be on more of an ASAP uh, time frame than a wait for a year time frame. Well, I think November, but November might work. Be, right. Yeah, yes. November I, might work. We'll, we'll be a couple months past when the state has the law out, but we've been there before. And I would bet we're not the only town that's no. going to miss There's the deadline. There's no way. We're, yeah, I think I would be okay with that. and Because I think we did Dan gave some good ideas on the on the fly and did a great job, but I do think we need to have that discussion. We need Ann. and get some get some <laughs> public input to, uh, you know, because what is the right number of acres? Is it three acres? Is it four acres? Yeah, maybe uh, I mean, three I, for two, or so, you know, there's, but there's I think a lot we need, of discussion there. Yeah, probably not tonight, but we need to have that mm-hmm. that discussion. So that puts us on a different time that we can talk about in April going yeah. forward. Is, like we did last time, we laid out a calendar. We're going to have an informal meeting and then just kind of go. And also, quite truthfully, my concern is we don't even get the even close to the final state guidance until end, next, of, a, end, well, of, April. end of April. <laughs> yeah. And it, it also, whatever we come up with, you know, hopefully we'll come, come up with something really good, but we need to, um, it needs to be appropriate time to educate the public so we yes. can get it passed. Yes. Exactly. Especially if we only have one option. Yeah. Like, and that's what a paper ballot it has to be one option. Oh, okay. Because, I, you know, you can't vote on two, and oh, you know, yeah. I would think. Dude, I think uh, that would be the goal is to not confuse option. things with multiple options either, just to get one option that works and covers everything, but take the time to get it done right and have time to educate the 
voting public on it in November time frame probably would work. For okay, so we can shoot for that and get into more detail, uh, you know, going down the road. We can work up a, a schedule and all that stuff. So, okay, so private roads, are we, are we okay with, we made a recommendation. Can we put the final nail on that coffin? I think so. Okay, and so then the, George explained uh, the, the conversation we had with the selectmen last night, and they're here to answer any questions we may have. Um, I think the discussion was that 1A, and as you recall, 1A was um, take out that which shouldn't be in there and then add everything else up to and including 6 plus. Um, and so that map we've kind of discussed. There's no changes being, I don't think we're here to discuss any changes about 1A. Uh, so if you vote for 1A, then you, you know, if that wins, then we don't even go on to 1B. And then the question is on 1B, um, uh, what what do we want to do with that? And I probably the one of the selectmen can do a better job of explaining their concerns, but I'll take answers. Yeah, just really questions first. quick. I just want to confirm um, the select board made their decision last night, right? So we're not. No, there was no decision. No, there was no decision. There, um, was, there, was, a rec there was a recommendation. So it's back to us? Yes. Oh. Maybe, okay. yes. Oh, I guess it's maybe a short for okay. I just think it's so, a, <laughs> you, Sorry. Many, many boards, committees throughout the town, we vote on things. And as things develop, we may reconsider our vote, just like we did tonight. And I, just because we had voted on it before doesn't mean that we can't reconsider it. I mean, some people would say, well, you can't reconsider it because you voted. We have new information that is more, that is clarifying our. Uh, certainly identifying some concerns. So I honestly believe that if we do need to reconsider it, we should. And tonight would be the night to, to do that. Right. So. Exactly. So and I think, the, and I won't put words in, in their mouth, but I'll take a shot at it. I think the concern of the selectmen was 1A fails. And this, is, this discussion is only if 1A fails. So mm -hmm. if 1A passes, uh, then would the, you know the discussion we're about to have is is mute. Um, so on one B, the concern was that one B took things out, but it also added six A six plus mm -hmm. six plus uh, issues, and the concern was would that pass the town? Or are we going to have the situation one A fails, one B fails, and in the, if the belief is that one A fails because six plus is in there, then one B could also fail. And I will then ask the selectman to say if I've said that well, or if you'd like to. Yeah, if you want me to say it. Please do. Um, they want to picture the back. They've always seen your front, Kevin. They yeah. want to see it, right? <laughs> now the back's probably a better view. So um, so I, I want to uh, you know back up a little bit to you know, last year's town meeting when we, we had the vote, just the one vote on on uh, removing things from resource protection that uh, didn't meet any of the criteria identified in the comprehensive or listed in the comprehensive plan. The intention was a two-step process to, you know, fix that part. And then this year would have been the, okay, what are the criteria? What would be added to resource protection? So that failed at town meeting last year. And what we heard was that, you know, people, they didn't want the vote separated. They wanted it together. Mm -hmm. And so fine. And so uh, the board, though, in, uh, was still very concerned that if, if the town, if we put it all in one question and the town rejects that, that you still have a lot of property owners you know, burdened with um, uh, property identified as resource protection that doesn't, that really shouldn't be based upon the criteria in the comprehensive plan. So uh, during a, uh, a hearing that the Conservation Commission, um, you know, kind of led at the Eureka Center, you know, there was a lot of discussion about that aspect of it. And um, it offered, uh, I offered a, uh, a compromise idea, I said, okay, let's go ahead and ask the combined question first, you know, the 1A question, <clears throat> but that if that failed, have a contingency question that would then say, um, would the town vote to remove from resource protection any lands that don't meet any of those uh, six criteria? 
but when I read the language of the um, of one B, and I and I guess you know uh, I only read it uh, a short time ago, so this it, that, you know I apologize for the lateness of bringing this up. I was trying to stay out of the ordinance stuff as much as possible this year. The um, the language to me um, it doesn't just remove the land that doesn't meet the criteria. It actually mm. is asked the town as part of voting yes on that, you would be approving the resource protection criteria that was just rejected in question 1A. And so the, the ask, the, the most of the conversation last night was about changing 1B completely and just really asking the sim, a, a simplified question with no criteria going into ordinance taxes is with to see if the town will vote to remove from resource protection any lands that don't meet any of the criteria um, then john offered a uh, a, di a slightly different approach which makes sense because um, according to george you know the first five criteria are already in the ordinance text anyway so uh, the concern I had, as long as I can look a citizen in the eye and say, if you vote, assuming 1A failed, if if you vote yes on 1B, then we're, we're not adding any new criteria. We're not adding anything, but we are correcting the, the, um, the misrepresentation on the map for things. So that's, if, you know, if, if 1B is going to go on the warrant, the board would look for some sort of language change that accomplishes what I just said. I do think though, and I will acknowledge, you know, Joe Roy and I from the Conservation Commission had a great conversation for about an hour ago and, you know, we had our own little debate in the uh, town manager's office and it was a great conversation. And he raised se several really good points and that leads me to wonder whether 1B should go on the warrant at all. Um, so I think that will be a board discussion at our meeting on March 14th. But if if one B does go on the warrant, it needs to be in in our opinion in language that meets the original intent and not doesn't have a secondary effect of adding um, language to the text that you know make that is not really intended as part of that question. Would it be possible to have the questions worded such like one A? would be about what it is now, but just the first five points. So hopefully we can at least yeah. get that passed in, in, and then one B would add in six. No, I, sorry. I'm going to stop Ron. I, we're not changing one a, we are well, not, not changing. Cha well, well, I, I think we're changing. We're, we're changing one B. Right. We're talking about one B, but I, I'm sorry. I, we have gone through this so many times. Yeah. I, and I, I, I think what Ron is getting at is is, is actually in, in the conversation like Joe and I had is like, what if if we didn't put one B out and one A failed, you know, we'd basically be right where, right we, where are we are now. And that then maybe, you know, an approach in the future is like, okay, take things at a little bit more granular level and like, a, like steps. Up, up, like uh, ask about the criteria individually. You know, mm. I mean that's like, but that's for another day. That's like, you know, I think the the question tonight is, I, I think the ask from the board, and 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 granted, yes, it's the board's decision, but these things always go better if everybody's kind of on the same page when we go in. So, you know, if the if the planning board was on board with, you know, the language change so that one the one B accomplished what was in the original intent and nothing more. Um, Can. Yeah. Sorry, can we ask Joe to step up here and talk about it? Just because I I have been deferring to conservation. We can, I, but I just okay. I do want to. Work. Well, keep him up here. You know, let's yeah. have a conversation. Yeah, well, you, could, we, yeah Joe, they we're going to do. This. But John's great idea was exactly <laughs> what you started with on one A, which is there are six criteria, I think, six items that would show up on the map, and so one the the first five. Our wetlands and shoreland and all those other things that are required. So one B would eliminate the six plus six. So you'd have if if well, again if one A passes, it includes everything. If the will of the town is six plus be included in that, we never get to one B. The, but the way that's the way it's worded though is that even though it, it would add 
the first five criteria to ordinance text, but it wouldn't apply it to any new land the way one B is written. Right yeah. Now. That's, I think that's the problem is like we have land right now that's in resource protection that shouldn't be. And we have some that should based on these other criteria. Um, and I'm afraid we're not, wouldn't be correcting that. I think, I mean, well, I think that's well, the most critical thing. What? 1A would. Well, 1A wouldn't add a lot. Um, but it would be, you know, I think if, like John said, if this fails, 1A fails, I think we really got to make 1B. So 1A, so the, and then and there's two, and, you know, I'm not going to put words in Joe's mouth because he make, he makes a good argument. I'll see if I can represent it here. But, you know, if Joe, yeah, you can for, come if 1B, if 1A fails, so then, then the choice point of whether you put 1B on is like, because if even if 1B passed, you're still left with, a misalignment between the map and the um, ordinance text. Yeah. You have less of a misalignment than you had before. You've at least addressed some of the um, uh, issues of people that are shown in resource protection but shouldn't be, but you potentially create other issues by not applying those criteria to other lands that would be added to um, resource protection. You were in essence applying the criteria not in a uniform way across the town. Did I get yeah. my caption? So one a, Joe, sorry, before yeah. you go, I'm sorry. I'm just going to state, and I, I maybe you guys are going to talk about this, but what my issue with this is that years we've been doing this since mm -hmm. we developed the comp plan. We've been talking about this and trying to develop this. And mm -hmm. we're at this point, we've come so far, this failed last year or yeah. two years, whatever it was. The whole idea was to fix the data, right, together. 1A is you keep sites in or property in that covers all of it. You take it out. That's not supposed yeah. to be there. 1B is now completely different than 1A. Yeah, so I can so talk about 1A. I just, I want to, I want to keep that focus of how we got here and mm -hmm. don't lose that. We, all of these items, we didn't just pull number six out of thin air. That was part of the comp plan. We talked about this for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's part of it. Yeah, one B is, that, but. you know, the, the thing about one B is one B, if one A fails, one B passes, we would go to the second part of one B next year, right? Which would be to add the properties in. Perhaps. I mean, ultimately. That was the whole idea right, of this whole thing. At the end of the day, no matter what the comp plan says, if voters don't approve it, it doesn't happen. So, you know, and so then the question is if you, if you can't get voters to approve what the comp plan says and they and they're not consistent, then perhaps it's the comp plan that needs to change. If 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 voters have changed and aren't where they were in 2018 on on the issue. To me, the first four, maybe five, are law. And it would be good to at least get the zoning ordinance in line with the law. That was John's good idea. And and then <laughs> not everybody so, agrees. No, so that's that's why I would like that's you know, already in I'd the like, ordinance. You know, one A to be you know to at least take that step, and and hopefully we could get that passed. Hopefully we can get them both passed. But then if we wouldn't pass one B, one A passes. But but yeah, I'm going somewhere. Can, can I finish my train, please? Wait, so. <laughs> Choo -choo. <laughs> I got a 1A that would be like the first four, maybe, maybe five. And hopefully we could get that passed. And the 1B would just add more to it. And hopefully we can get that passed too. It's in line with the comprehensive plan. But if we couldn't, at least we could get the first four passed and be aligned with the law. It would be the other way around. The 1A should be all of it. 1B would be the four that you just talked about. I disagree about. 100%. I disagree 100%. It's, it's confusing to go out with this big one that's 1A and then say, eh, if you don't really like that, vote for 1B. Well, and Joe, you're, you're going to get your chance, I promise. I think the concern is, to, to what you're saying, is what seemed and what I've heard in, in various things, and a couple of people spoke to it last night. A couple of people spoke to it at our meeting. The concern is six, the six plus, and that's that is the the killer deal in this with the town. And so, if it with one A passes, then John, you know, then I'm wrong, and it's not an issue. And the six plus is in there. If it 
doesn't, you know, but if it doesn't pass, then you take away the poison pill of six and you get something that takes stuff out uh, that shouldn't be there. And oh, by the way, there may very well be new wetlands, new floodplain that are, you know, that we're not, it may not be just taking things out. So that, I think six, in my opinion, six plus may be the killer. And, and Joe's been waiting patiently. Yeah, I'll clarify my statement. Kevin was articulating it accurately. So my thought process is 1A is essentially saying, do you adopt the comprehensive plan recommendations? And that includes applying all six criteria across the entire town of Durham. So that at the end of the day, if 1A is passed, the new resource protection district would be drawn. That means some land would be added and some land that is currently in resource protection would be removed and some land would remain the same. So that is what the nature of 1A is, is it can functionally be listed. Do you want to adopt the recommendations from the comprehensive plan relating to resource protection? So that adds and subtracts with 1A. Where we were talking about the confusion with 1B and the select board talked about it last night was then you get into, if you're saying 1B would only apply these criteria where resource protection already exists because that's what's correct. That also kind of implies that you're adopting all of the criteria, but then only applying them within the current resource protection, which could create inequity because then someone who is in a resource that should be protected isn't being put with the restriction of resource protection while someone else who is in the same resource is receiving that. So it would be an equal um, application across it. So what Kevin and I had just mentioned was if the last year's meeting was let's remove things and then come back next year and add things and the feedback the select board got was no, let's do it all at once. Right. This year's 1A is fine. We heard you. Let's do it all at once. If that fails, then what the voters are saying is we do not agree with the comprehensive plan, which would then require more work to say, well, then what do the voters want that is in line with the comprehensive plan? So if that fails, my thought process is moving forward, like Kevin said, later, moving forward would be, okay, now let's have these discussions. Is it one of these criteria in the future, maybe at a future town meeting, let's go through and adopt criteria one at a time? Because we don't know what the poison pill is. For some people, they like six plus. For some people, they don't. Some people might not like the inland wading river and waterfowl habitat. So, but it seems like what is most in line with trying to push forward the comprehensive plan is to give everyone this opportunity now to vote on it in one fell swoop. And so that's what I was. So you're suggesting that we just have one A. I mean, that's my suggestion. We just have one A and then I feel that when you include a one B, it's hard to just think about one A because you're thinking about what the next vote possibly could be. Makes it confusing. And I think that one B is where some of the confusion comes into place. Um, and ultimately, if one A goes in and fails, everyone who went in and went out is leaving with the same exact restrictions as they started with. So no one, if 1A fails, no one's leaving with additional restrictions. So they are dealing with the property as they purchased it and as it was when they got it. And I feel that that's a little bit more equitable. And then when it comes time to say, okay, if the town doesn't want the comp plan and we need to go through and go line by line, that is when you start dealing with accept this criteria for everyone or no one and then move on to the next criteria. So that's a big if. But because when you talk about the ifs, this doesn't pass. It complicates the current conversation. Yeah. I would just advocate for 1A only. Now, the select board writes the everything, but this is just no, kind of a conversation like Kevin and I had. That's why I said, you know, I said, you know, the, the question of the language is one question. The question of whether the, it goes on the warrant at all is a separate question. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I am deaf. I am, I am, I will, I'm swayed uh, by the conversation, Joe, that I've had over the last hour or so here. And, um, and the, in, uh, both in terms of the equity, but in terms of the simplification um, mm -hmm. of yeah. the process and the clarity. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and I think, you know, the a, a, a point that, um, you know, we've been, and, and I think rightly, you know, the board has been, you know, trying to correct uh, issues where property owners are shown in resource protection, but they're but they really shouldn't be based on the criteria. So I think, you know, two points to that. One is, um, 
they actually even today have remedy on that. And, and we've actually seen it happen. Like they can, they can go to the board of appeals and say, you know, we don't meet any of the criteria for resource protection. And, and the board of appeals has at least in one case already has said, yeah, you're right. So you're not, you're not subject to the, to that. And then, you know, I think Joe made an excellent point. It's like, you know, they knew or should have known that the property was in resource protection when they, they bought it. it. Exactly. Um, so um, I think those things, you know, um, I, I think it speaks to the power of two people sitting down and talking to each other versus the Facebook nice warriors the to try to pollute the waters yeah. out there. So Kevin, so you agree or you, you're, you're leaning towards a one a and then no one B. Is that, I mean, I think that's a fair statement. Um, but you know, again, I'm just one of five board members. Ultimately yeah. the board has to make that yeah. <clears throat> decision. Like I know there are board members that, um, have pretty strong feelings about resource protection anyway, yeah. you know, in any form. Mm -hmm. um, but, but ultimately it's up to, um, uh, you know, up to the board when we, when we vote on the 14th. But yeah, well, personally, I think that's where I'm leaning. Well, the, the big argument last at the last annual town meeting was, why aren't you combining this? So now we combine it where, because I mean, Joe was argument, arguing that at town floor saying we need to combine both of these and now this is it's been done and he agrees with it it's almost like well, if we have one b there we're opening it back up to the same problem we had last year yeah you know, and i like I, it it's clean one a like you said it's the comp plan right and that is what i was thinking when this changed so we have that in there if the town votes for it great if the town doesn't vote for it, great, but we're back at the drawing table and we have to understand what the concerns are, which gives us more time to do that. But we don't know what the concerns are. Well, we'll have be. to figure it out. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. I think it's really easy to say that what if next. And sometimes I think like how much of our conversation last time at the town meeting was talking about the potential for the next year's vote. Mm -hmm. And then the moderator was like, well, let's talk about things that are on the ballot. Not things that might be next <laughs> yeah. And it's like, so if we start off with a conversation where it's like, all right, I want to talk about 1A by telling you why 1B is really bad. Right, well, right. There may never be that. So, so actually there's no 1A or B. And, it's actually and, 1. And I think that right. the benefits of 1A is right. that if 1A goes alone, the thing is, is each one of those criteria are discrete, measurable, they're backed by the most available data, and they were put in that document by the town. So it's right. mm -hmm. discrete, it measurable, there. scientifically supported set of criteria developed by people in the town of Durham. If they've changed their mind since then, that's a conversation for next year. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah. But we're not talking about it right now. Yeah. In my in my mind. No, I love I I yeah. it, it leads out the discussion to those folks who are who are negatively impacted mm -hmm. by a vote at, at the town. I mean, now they, they don't, they just have to get enough people. It's a democracy. Mm -hmm. They get enough people who are no, enough people who are yes, one one more on each side wins. So uh, and, thoughts uh, on the on the uh, the board about 1A, 1B? Well, I honest, I mean, I think that we should, certainly should support 1A. I think we should change it to 1, and I think that we should get rid of the B. It's confusing the issue. Okay. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree that two the two questions do confuse it. The the only sticking point for me, but I think you've kind of addressed that, is that the you know there is land that we are saying is in resource protection currently that doesn't meet any criteria. It would be nice to correct that, but I guess like you said, people do have recourse, um, so it probably doesn't really affect too many people. Yeah, I mean, not all. You remember the. Centennial went before the appeals board and got rejected because they Forest wanted Farm. they want yeah they would Centennial Farms whatever whatever it is wanted to uh, celebration oh, celebration, oh, celebration. Um, so yeah there is recourse but they got rejected now fortunately for them they had enough land that they could do <clears> something <throat> different so my concern would be the folks who ninety nine percent of their their land is covered with resource protection. And if we just say no, and again, that you have to rely upon the appeals board saying yes, we agree with you. But part part of the reason, the main reason that the board of appeals, which I attended that meeting with Celebration Tree Farm, decided not to grant the appeal was because of the pending map changes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they kind of, you're right. They, they kind of celebrate the uh, earlier equestrian center. There had not been any discussion of actually changing the maps at that point officially. I had done a report that, that outlined it, but no action had been taken. And so the Board of Appeals said, we just feel it's inappropriate for us to circumvent the legislative process. So you you are relying upon a board to say, yep, you know, you shouldn't be there, but, you know, we're not going to change it. So, but I hear a consensus. We can continue to beat this dead horse. <laughs> no one seems to like John's great idea, so I would draw that. And uh, do we have a consensus? Do we want to vote on eliminating one Bravo? Can I point out, I think it would be important to have a vote because we just sent out a letter to 480 property owners telling them part one and part two, or excuse me, 1A, uh, 2A, 1A and 1B. So there's going to be a change at this public hearing coming up on the 22nd to say so a decision has been made to just put one question on the ballot. So then, then do we need to reissue those letters? Those we cannot. Do well, that. because because uh, keeping right, the board, the board, and this is why I think you know, it still might be important to clean up the language of one B because the board could still vote to put a one B question out there. Well, let's let's discuss that. How would we, if we kept one B, how would we clean that language? Up? So the draft that you have tonight incorporates <laughs> the change. Requested, suggested by the select board last night. And what page is that? This is on the article uh, uh, two. This is on part one B, on the first page of text amendment. This page. And all it did was just eliminate uh, criterion F, which was the beginning with habitat going. six plus. Yeah, right there. So they just took out. So you, you brought. That was a good point about the letters that had been sent out. That makes me change my mind about not having two questions there but those letters we don't want to we've sent letters out to the people that are going to be affected and we it wouldn't make me feel very good about it if i received that letter and i said okay where's the second question it's not even on well, the article it, it, it's not, those people are still going to be affected. Well, it, yes, that's they not are. changing. Yes, they are. It's just, there's going to be one question instead of two. But no, but there, but uh, somebody says, I just can't, I can't agree with six plus. Then they vote no on question one. One A, but then, but they may also want to help out their neighbors or themselves yeah. in yeah. getting things withdrawn. That, that is one of the apprehensions of yeah. the board because we have been, um, you know, promise is probably too strong a word, but we have we have been given every giving every indication that there would be that second question. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I've, I sent somebody an email this morning telling them there was going to be a second well, question because because I... there because um, there is concern about the land that's misidentified uh, based on the comp plan criteria. And so, and, and I guess, Joe, I hear your concerns about if if one A loses. And we only get to one B or whatever we're going to call it. That doesn't mean that you don't then do exactly what you're saying, which is okay. Which of the six criteria can you live with? You know, in the meetings and say, okay, here they are. And some of it is a lack of some of it is a lack of knowledge what the six are. Mm -hmm. Some of it is a real concern on on landowners that I have lost seventy of my ninety acres to do anything with. And uh, so I, I will go back and we changed our consensus. I am concerned that people are, are going to show up that we've put something out. We've had a bunch of meetings. We've sent out a letter. Uh, I mean, it's still up to the selectmen to decide if they want to pull one B or whatever it may be. So this, so this we're, we're kind of talking about this would be what one B would be. Yes. Right. And then one A would, look just like this except it would have that six you know so my initial objection to, my initial objection to that was that it listed the criteria in it and it was basically it, it was kind of in it well it was putting the criteria into the ordinance text and and setting up a situation where okay now you've put this and you've adopted the criteria that was just rejected in the question before and you're um also going into ordinance text, but not having the corresponding map adjustment to go with it, you've established a new misalignment with now you have ordinance text criteria, but the part about adjusting the map to match it is not part of 
1B. So that's why I was initially looking to take all of the criteria out of 1B and simply ask the question, you know, like I've said a few times before, remove the land that's shown as resource protection on the map, but doesn't meet any of the criteria listed in the uh, comprehensive plan. That like simple, clean, um, but the, the downside of that, and, and quite honestly, anything other than a 1A approval is going to be messy in one way or another. But, it's like pick your mess, right? But, but we have we have sent out the letters to how many people? Three hundred and eighty. Uh, Four hundred and eighty. But we we basically sent that letter out said that it's going to be two questions, and I think that we are obligated to have two questions. Well, that means you said you are changing regardless. The what the second question is. So the letter says a question now that isn't going to be the question there. Regard if you drop one B, the letter is inaccurate to what is going to be on the ballot. If you don't drop 1B and you drastically change the description of 1B, the letter is still wrong. So no matter what the right. letter that's- But I don't think we'd be right. drastically changing 1B. We'd, we're just correcting it so that it's actually doing what was originally intended and what we told people it was going to do. And my only concern is the meeting is in 30 days. So at this point, the change to the draft language in 1B is different than what we have been talking about at the last few meetings. Yeah. So that's, yeah. you know, exactly. that's where it's yeah. kind of like the housing thing got complicated. So dropped it. My advocation is that since 1B is getting a bit more complicated, the recommendation <clears throat> be to drop it. The select board can write what yeah, they decide as a whole anyways. And that can happen. We just, you know, we just have to be ready with an explanation. <laughs> well, I do have one more selectman is would uh, like yeah. the input. I, my, my question, not having seen the letter, doesn't the letter just say there's a meeting on the 22nd here are the questions being proposed? No, it actually describes the changes and it includes the criteria. But it doesn't say this is what's going to be voted on at the town meeting. This is, it says this is what the planning board is recommending for yeah. a vote at the town It says meeting. the planning board has recommended two Warren articles, one of which has the full show and they have also recommended a second warrant article designated as 1B that will only apply to criteria to land within the Which is not a final decision. Which is not a final decision, which means which the expectation is that it can still be changed. So I, to me, that concern yeah, it's like the last is, day. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a, there's a greater concern. There are, I think, people who, a lot of people who don't want six plus, and don't want their land impacted, and they're gonna get their friends. But and they also want to help their buddies out who are on land that, that should not be. So to me, it's a whole lot easier to explain on the 22nd of March, Durham blast the whole nine yards that we've modified 1B to say this, and the six the criteria six is out, um, and see if if people want to do that. They may still say no. I mean, there may be somebody right. we, we don't want you to tell, tell us to do anything, but. So I, but again, if 1A passes, this is a moot discussion. If it doesn't, 1B may or may not pass. There may be enough people who said I, I wanted 1A and I won't vote for 1B. And my point with 1B is that it would not necessarily align very well with the comp plan. And that if we just did 1A and then everyone voted it down, then you could go through the process of saying, where do we align with the comp plan line by line next year? Whereas right now, why can't you do that now? Right we now don't have make, time. Right There's now no way we can do it. Assumption that what is holding people up is the one six plus criteria that is something that one person has talked about. So I don't mm. think that's necessarily a fair assumption to say that is what holds everyone in yeah, the town up. Because there are several people who are going to say, I don't want any resource protection. There are several people who are going to say, I like six plus, but I don't necessarily like this other thing. So I think we're kind of, if we propose a one B, that just removes one criteria, um, we're kind of making the assumption for the town that this is what was holding you up, which I don't think is a necessarily a fair assessment without a more robust public yeah. participation yeah. to assess what is the hang up there. I, I, I still keep coming back to the that I feel that people, at least there are certain people that want the map to be corrected so that land that doesn't meet the criteria that's in the zoning ordinance right now get taken out and stuff that is in the zoning ordinance right now get put in mm -hmm. oh, it's and it's point. not as big of a shift as 1a would be but that is one you just described that that's, is one a that's exactly one yeah. 
But the, the, well, he's talking about the. I'm the, talking about in the zone. Mandatory right state, now. federal. Oh, that doesn't include the six plus. Right. But all the other criteria is already in the ordinance. Right. Text. I see what you're saying. Okay. But yeah, the, yeah it's right now we our map uh, has some inaccuracies in it where there's some land that should be in there that's not based on zoning ordinance right now, and some land that is in resource protection based on the map, but doesn't meet the criteria that's in the zoning ordinance right now. Yeah. It'd but, be nice to be at least be nice to be able to correct that. And I feel like that was a sticking point yeah. for some people. Yeah, I mean, there there is people who want it to be right. So, I mean, I, again, I'm trying to say, well, this is what I think people are going to vote for. But I mean, people are going to vote for if there's enough people who support one A. You know, if it's 51 and there's only 50 that you know vote against it, then one A is the the thing. But I, I do have trouble with now making. I don't consider dropping at the after whatever it was as big a deal as dropping 1B. And I think, Joe, to your point about if 1A fails and 1B passes or it doesn't pass, we you need we need to go as a town, go back and say, okay, what are the six criteria should we not be looking at? And if you don't do blank, the only one I can remember is blanding turtle. So if you don't do blanding turtle, this is what it what they look like. If you don't do bald eagle habitat. This is what the, the yeah, map is. That that. More like the, com like the comprehensive planning process. So that has gone through, and the town has said, these are the six criteria we want. So 1A simply just gives them the opportunity to vote on their six criteria. Yeah, if, if you can sell it as a scoplet. I don't play. think that it's necessarily it the, the, without a more robust participation from the public, the purview of us to then say, well, we are now deciding what we think are the ones you actually care about, and then trying it again on 1B. I think the inclusion of no, no, not, just not. complicates the discussion around 1A because inevitably right now, the only reason we're talking about this is because we're like, well, if 1A doesn't, what's 1B? Whereas we could just vote on 1A and if it doesn't go through, then have the robust part public participation and really key out those important things. And ultimately then the de democratic process can go through and say, yes, no, yes, no, yes, 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 or something like that. I just, I just see my, people my show. The problem with that is I feel like people asked us to correct the problems and instead of just doing that, we're going one step further in adding in new criteria. Well, people uh, have to do one. And I, I think it would be good to at least have an option where we correct those problems. And then if people do want to add in the other criteria too, yes, they can do that. But. So I just, again, go back to where we were. The This whole thing was from the 2018 comp plan. That's what this whole thing was born from. Well, I think there's two things. There's a comp plan and there's also the the, ma the mapping yeah, errors. Yeah, exactly. So the comp plan with the mapping errors is where this came from, from the beginning. The comp plan was a very robust public opinion thing this was before you were on the board but a long time ago and we asked m multiple questions we a lot of things were on the board we got to this point and that was what this whole thing is about so to me let's take it to the voters if they want that they'll vote for it if they don't want it they won't vote for it then we'll be back and i think we're still taking it to them i think whoever gets up and presents it says this is the comp plan this is what we all talked about for two years in 2016 to 2018 here's why it's in there mm -hmm. uh, here's the map and the impact and there will be lots of people who will say yes i want to follow the comp plan and but just because it's in the comp plan if the voters say we don't want to do that at least at the end of the day we have taken people who are incorrectly uh, impacted, I guess. I mean, I, I just see you got to sell 1A is, is all this is, yeah. is going to pass. I mean, we've, you've, you've done a good job of the, the Conservation Commission has done a great job of doing that. We've had lots of meetings to say this is what 1A is. But I think it's up to the voters to say we want 1A or we don't want, and they may very well say we don't want 1B either. Right, but we, uh, this whole reason why we're here talking about this is because the select board voted last night. Or, or I'm sorry, consensus. not you. Your consensus was to take out F. The right? consent, yeah. So there's, is, and the taking out of F is is really has nothing to do with F per se. Mm -hmm. what, the, what it's about is taking out anything that would add something new to the ordinance text, mm -hmm. and that happens to be that it's only F that is that. 
So again, like I said, when I started, I was like, you know, take all the criteria out and just ask a very, a very simple question. And um, I can't remember the conversation, but there were some, some issues with that. Um, and John suggested, well, you know, if you just take out F, the other stuff's already in the ordinance anyway, so you're not adding anything new. And, and I said, as long as I can look somebody in the eye and not be lying to them and tell them that, you know, we're not adding anything new. We're all, all this, the end result of 1B is that we're taking out um, land sh shown as resource protection, but it doesn't meet any of the criteria in the comp plan. And that's it, period. Period. We're not adding anything else, um, you know, and I think that uh, that's been the original intent of that question from the beginning and the language didn't match that intent and that's why I raised the issue. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think that's what 1B was supposed to be all along. Well, Somehow it didn't quite get there. Yes, but also it was the inaccurate mapping, including F. Like we like that's one A, not one B. Well, no, the, the whole thing taking it was only keeping property in and taking property out of this whole thing, which included F. Right? That was that was it that's the one A question to do it all. Yeah, no, no, I know, but like the, the second half of it was just to take originally, out. originally, but when we were when we the original plan when we were talking about like what we tried to do last year to start, like the last year was about taking this misidentified stuff out. And this year was going to be about, okay, what's the criteria? What are we adding? And people didn't like that approach. That's fine. So, you know, what the board was looking for was um, if the, if the combined question didn't pass, like, you know, like John has referenced, we, you know, we can at least fix the um, issue of the misidentified property and acknowledging that that doesn't completely fix everything, but at least it, it's an incremental step towards getting us there. And then it takes that piece off the table, potentially, if it passed, when you do start talking about, you know, what's going to go in. Because if, if part of the reason 1A fails is because you got stuff coming and going and I don't know and I'm confused and this criteria, that criteria you know, if you take the stuff that's coming out, you know, resolve that and then then focus on, OK, what's the criteria? What's going in? That was like kind of the original plan. And um, but and that's why I think it's important not to muddy the waters in a 1B by, you know, adding criteria. It's just about a simple ask. And when Kevin and I were talking earlier, one thing that I did raise and that's for consideration for the select board is that in a scenario where there is a 1A and a 1B, and if let's say 1A were to fail and 1B were to pass, for example, let's look at um, FEMA floodplain mapping. We would then be saying, apply the FEMA floodplain map to areas where it is already in resource protection. But the updated FEMA floodplain map actually also extends goes outside of the current resource protection boundary and pulls in new landowners. So if you adopt 1B, what you could run into is I am someone who is in a map floodplain, but the town says that I don't have to follow resource protection, but Kevin lives next door to me and he's in the same map floodplain and he does have to follow resource protection. So by adopting 1B in this manner, you do get to the point where you're saying we have adopted this criteria, but it is not applied everywhere it truly occurs it's only applying where we used to have resource protection so it definitely scratches if, the edge of pulling I'm not, some people if out. 1a fails that's the case anyway well i guess i'm not sure why that is if if what we're saying is resource protection is defined as fema wetlands shoreline protection all those kinds of things it doesn't matter that my land is now in there and it shows as resource protection and Allen's is not in there as of one April. If the, if one B passes, he's now in resource protection. No, well, I no, think, no, no. I think the what beast. they're saying is the that's way one B is written right now, that what he's the scenario he mentioned it would happen, that and that's is. what we need we to need do. Need so there be one. people living along River Road right now that are in a mapped floodplain, but it's not mapped as resource protection. So that's where the I old am data versus about the inequity. Yeah, and well, that's where I say okay. any sort of change in ordinance should be adopted black and white. This is the map and it either impacts everyone or we say it doesn't impact anyone. And that's why I would advocate against the 1B 
If 1A doesn't pass, then you can go through and say line by line. Do we want to apply this to every landowner equally? Yes, no, yes, yes, no, or whatever people vote. And then that also shows that we attempted as a town to push forward the outlined material in the comprehensive plan in one fell swoop. That didn't go through. Then the town did its best to go through at a later date and go line by line. And at that point, if things fail, that's just the town saying, we don't like this element of the comprehensive right. plan. And, but we, you, that, to me, passes the straight face of being in line because then you let people vote. And well, I, I think at least what you're saying indicates that 1B needs some work if we're going to keep it. You, well, I, I you could make an argument to just yeah, get rid of it, yeah. but it's also an argument if we're going to keep it. And I think mm -hmm. that I've got that, voice that I'm not sure I it. understand why it doesn't, because they both say exactly the same verbiage, and it refers to a zoning map. So if we go 1A, we have to change the zoning map. That's part of this discussion, right? Mm -hmm. Well, like, If we go 1B, we have to change the zoning map. But the 1B would only make changes, like, for example... The areas that are completely gray um, are currently resource protection. 1B would say only apply criteria 1 through 5 in the town of Durham if that also overlaps with an area that is currently resource protection. So all this green area that is not currently within resource protection would not be applied. Now, some of this could be like, oh, we're not going to apply it to this 10-acre wetland, but we are applying it to this one because it's our in resource protection. Where it really is difficult to pass a straight face test is on the FEMA floodplain mapping. So if the onus of this is that the floodplain mapping is inaccurate and we need to correct it, 1B would say we're correcting the floodplain mapping except where the floodplain mapping exists current resource protection. And then you get into a scenario where somebody owns a property in a floodplain but because they were on saying, the other no, side of this just arbitrary line, good. they now have a yeah, different set of rules that. to follow. And so that's where I think that if we went through at a later date line by line, that's more equitable for people. And if we don't pass 1A, no one's leaving with additional restrictions on their property that day. Like Kevin and I were saying, the people who own the property that's resource protection know that already. Right. So this isn't like we're adding in resource protection if 1A makes it equal across the board, 1B would not make it equal across the board. Right. Um, well, and there's a policy you could say, well, I think it's more important to pull people out and let people get away with not following the rules in certain areas because it protects people who are having rules pushed on them and others. Like that's a policy question. It's that's the don't send the guilty question. to prison. Don't yeah. send the innocent to prison, even if some of the guilty go free. It's kind but, of that. But what I'm just advocating for is that there is a framework to just say if 1A doesn't pass, then at a later date we go through and just vote through them individually. And that makes it more equitable because you just get to the point where someone's like, John and I live in the same floodplain, but I'm across the imaginary line and I can't develop my house. I can't build a house in so I, th I think we hear you loud and clear what the well, issue is with the way 1B is written. But uh, is it? Because are you referring to the, the statement in the note that says it only applies to that within the current? Okay. Yeah, well, because that's not part of the article. I'm looking at like the February 15th, page 13, and it clearly says Article 1B will apply the same comprehensive plan resource criteria, but only to land currently within the resource protection Where district are you reading boundaries. That? Uh, and those are the summary talking points that's, that came with the original by John. If that's not actually part of the article, oh, article then, then so where it says in the, yeah, yeah, in the article that brings it, but that brings it even further there. away from what the original intent was. Was because you're because then that because <laughs> the intent was that we're only taking stuff out, we're not adding anything in. And the way it's written, it would add stuff in. But I guess the one you know, one thing I was they kind of a summary of this, like. I think um, sitting in this room are probably the eight to 10 people that know this issue as well as anybody in town and look at this conversation. Can you imagine what this conversation will be like on town floor? And that is, that's kind of why I'm coming around to the simple, keep it simple yeah. One argument, Kiss. 1A yeah. up or down. And then Ron, I think you're on the right track for, the next approach to, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, take just the first five or if we even talked about, do you take them individually or how do you present mm -hmm. the criteria to the town down the road? Should 1A not pass? Um, but, I, um, and, but I also think, you know, to Juliet's point that, you know, we did go through this comprehensive plan process 
And somewhere along the line, we ought to give people a chance to actually vote whether to put it into ordinance or not. Exactly. You know. Thank you. I agree. And I think that where we we Kevin kind of talks about like we probably pay attention to this more than everyone. Our confusion is lying in well, what if one A doesn't? What does one A exactly do? And when you put that on the ballot, if you're saying you either get one A or one B, there's no way people can separate those. And we saw those when we were going to split them up year to year last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Half the discussion was on something that is never going to end up being on the ballot now because. We decided not to do that. And we all spent six hours at the meeting, probably an hour worth talking about a vote that's going to happen this April and that's never going to happen. If I have no problem um, if, if, this, if this is where the board goes, um, I have no problem at town meeting explaining why we're only at one question. Yeah. I think that's a pretty. That could be a pretty straightforward explanation. Well, we have yeah, to, and I think what I you, think so. you, Joe? Joe, yeah. yeah. I think what Joe just says, why I was kind of to the point where like, 1A should be like the what's in the zoning ordinance and changing the map, and then 1B adding it in, because um, then you do you you know deal with that kind of question level. But I think that would be too confusing to yeah. change. We were point. talking about um, so I think you know just going to 1A wouldn't be that confusing. Yeah. We were talking about how conversation. Like the one percent most important part is the nuance, and sometimes in a public setting, that's very hard to talk about the nuance there. And the, whereas one A would just be a simple yes or no, you know. So procedurally, what could happen is that on March fourteenth, yep, you're going to make a decision what to put on for warrant article questions for, for all the articles. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, the select board could decide not to put one B on. That's right. We will have sent out a letter as of March 1st. The planning board was recommending two. <laughs> and you can, I got no problem saying, you and, know, and at the public hearing, we went a different direction. And here's why the select board now, has, has said only one question is going to be on the ballot. Do is there, do we need to discuss one B and see if there are any corrections that need to be made to that? In well, I think the question the is, are board, we going to recommend that one B do, be? I know deleted? that, but. What if the select board says, no, we want 1B on the ballot? Do right. we need to look at that language and make sure if that ended up going that way, we have a 1B that we're coming? Well, and, and I continue to, I don't think the article says what you guys are, are saying. I think the note on the, the bottom of the page that says note says that's the only place that I see where it says it only applies to these. Right. As, as it's written right now, uh, and if you actually, as, as it's written, one B is no different than one A. It's the same question. Would we drop death though? No. Well, uh, if we follow your idea, I mean, as it's written right now, today, it's the same question. Yeah, we would have to vote on the draft that, that George gave us. No, because that part's not actually in the question. It's a note. So we would have to drop. So but it's the not, map, but the map. So it's actually even worse than I thought. So we're all saying one B is confusing. <laughs> Exactly, so, it is. So, so can I? I mean, I, I would like. I can. Can I make a motion to to vote? Hold, hold just one second. Sure, hold sure. that So, if we don't do anything tonight, if we just leave it as is, or we vote to just not send one B forward, either one. If the selectmen want to change the verbiage, you could. They could do that. Uh, my recommendation would be. If, if if this is the way, if this is your consensus, if you don't if you if you don't feel that the one B question should go, then then just change your recommendation to that and not mess with the language, and because the language isn't even close anyway. And you um, you think that would pass muster with the select board? They'd be on board with that. I I honestly, it's a tough call. My sense, if I had to predict right now, um, I think it's a three two vote. And I'm not sure which way it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's why I wonder if we should. But wouldn't that then fall on the select board to write their 1B language? Because they write the warrant language anyways. Uh, technically, yes. Um, actually, it, it, um, w what could happen is that the board could decide this isn't ready to go to voters at all and not send 1A or 1B. Because the way I see it as right now is that we're 14 days or 22 days before the hearing. We're saying 1B is very confusing and either needs a total rehaul or needs to be 
gotten rid of. Yeah, so, and I, I I continue to disagree if you delete the note because I don't see any difference between yeah, I don't think one total read. Yeah, one A and one B if you eliminate the notes. It just says resource protection district shall be those designated on the official zoning map of the town for those as at the meeting as meeting the following, then it lists five on B. And then the note goes, it doesn't say this only applies to existing or it only applies to non-existing. That's what I mean. So like as written before you take out the F, the two questions are the same, right? Before, I, before. I'm taking out F. Okay, but even if you take out F without the note, one B is one A without the six plus yeah. criteria, basically what you were talking about. So yeah, I say we, uh, my, my suggestion or motion would be that we send um, notice to the select board that we recommend just going with 1A. Um, but if they insist on having 1B too, this is what we think it should say. If they vote to go with 1B. Yeah. You know, honestly. But we recommend. It's just, Alan, just Alan, Alan not at first. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, he's thinking. So, oh, so for, ahead. for I, me, if I like the let's one is on the ballot, one B is off. That is our recommendation. If if they choose one B, I whatever you guys want to throw on one B. But like but I, we don't have time. Granted, they have the option of putting whatever articles they want on there. But we are the planning board, and we we would be submitting one article. I don't think they are going to submit a second article. On their own recommendation, not ours. Right. right. That we need if if, <clears throat> if there's any chance of one B going on there, <clears throat> now's our chance to have a say in what it says. And they're not going to spend a lot of time rewording. I mean, I in my opinion, I, I disagree with our there's respected gentleman at the end of the table. I don't see that it would if you eliminate F, if that's the only change we make to one B, then um it it puts all that other stuff. It you know it puts all that other stuff on. Takes out what isn't official wetlands. Takes out all that stuff that's not shoreland protection. But it also adds any land like to the floodplain point, Jose. It would also add yeah. land that is not currently on the map identified as resource protection. But with the adoption of the new floodplain criteria would be added to oh, and i said that last night there are people who are going to right and that's where i said the the original going back to the original intent was that we would the the one b question would only be dealing with taking stuff <clears throat> out it wouldn't be about adding anything new that but and i'm not necessarily saying that's the way it should that's you know it should go now but that was huh? the original we don't have them all we, we need to get one yeah, yeah. i would agree so, this up. do we I, have a i'll uh, make the motion I'll make the motion that we keep, we recommend to the select board um, 1A, change it to 1. We scrap 1B. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Let's say, can you restate the Sorry. motion? Sorry. Uh, motion is to um, keep 1A, recommend to the board, but change it to 1 and scrap 1B. There's one question so on the So you're making a motion. We're going to recommend making that, motion. that. All right. Yeah. Uh, and we have a second from Alan. Any further discussion? If not, raise a hand if you're in favor. Three to one. But can we make a motion to revise 1B? We in just case it. No, uh, we just. No, we we, just, well, we no, just that voted we, not to present yeah, it. Well, we voted to make a recommendation that they only send 1A. Right. But I'm saying that if the three to two vote, <clears throat> goes with 1B on ballot, it'd be nice to have a say in what that You says. can make a motion and then you can vote on it. But what I'm, what I'm saying is usually with, with ordinance changes, they're submitted by the planning board. They are not submitted by the selectmen. So there has to be a recommendation from the planning board to put an ordinance change out there. It's not going to be the selectmen that's making that recommendation. And we have recommended not to do that. So you, can, you can put another motion out there, but I'll vote against it. Yeah. All right. You see what I'm, I'm saying? What you're no, saying? No, I don't. I, I, like, you're, you're, Kevin, you're, you're, Kevin you're said, suggesting. Kevin said that they, they're going to vote on this, whether to keep 1B on there, and it's going to go 3 to 2, and he doesn't know which way that's going to go. So if they keep 1B, I don't like the way it's written right now. It would be nice to 
But what, what I'm saying, I don't think the select board, they don't have the authority to go over the planning. Oh, board. yeah, we do. We, yeah. yeah. At, when it comes to the select board has absolute final say on the wording of any article but you, uh, that goes to the But town. you're saying you're going to create I'm an article that I'm, hasn't been presented to you? I'm, I'm, I'm not, not saying I would board? do that. I'm just saying that the select well, board has the authority if they these, chose These have already been presented to them. Okay. Make a motion. Well, I, I think I'm we need to first discuss what, how it's going to change. <laughs> I, I would but, hope you wouldn't. Do you want to make a motion? I don't want to make a motion yet. I want to discuss how it should change. I, I don't feel like we have enough time. It, yeah. It's 9.05. I, we have I how many days? F. 22. The verbiage here, draw, the F's already dropped. All right, uh, I make note. a motion that 1B just drops F. And... Yeah, that's uh, that's how it's written. And how and is that going to be presented to the select board? How we're going to present it, it becomes the question. Well, we've well, we've already sent them a recommendation. We don't want one B. Okay. But if they insist on having one B, we make a recommendation that it just drops out. Okay. Do we have a second? Um, fails for lack of a second. I think so. I mean, my feeling is we've made a decision. We're telling, and, and you know, my feelings about that. We're you, we've told them it's one A or nothing, and they may go with with nothing, or they may go with one, just one A. And I just heard it was a recommendation to have one A, yeah. just one, but I didn't hear it was one A. Well, if they if they've three of the five have certainly said, well, we want to have a way to do one B. They, they so have some language. Certainly, yeah, so I like to Alan's point. What you know, just because something is legal or you have the authority to do it doesn't mean it's a good idea. Um, in fact, or it can be a horrible opinion. idea. Um, <laughs> uh, uh huh. So I, it, it will. It will be. Is that a? It will be is my recommendation. Yeah, it will be my recommendation to follow the planning board's recommendation because I think. What we one of the objectives we had from the beginning was, if, if if there's going to be any prayer of moving this forward, then the select board, the planning board, and in this case the conservation commission need to go in in alignment. And that, that doesn't mean that what we're going in in alignment on is what everybody would have preferred to have as like Plan A, but. Given all the considerations and the potential for confusion at town floor, like I said, imagine this multiplied by ten. Won't you know, be Girl <laughs> there won't be enough Girl Scout cookies <laughs> to get through the day. <laughs> right, my, so, you know, kind of my. I, I hear what you say. My feeling is we put the ball in their court, and that's it, that's what you should do. probably and, time. And you just and you know where if there's a if there's. We're the bad cop. If there's a bad cop, that's us. <laughs> there is one more clock. The town clerk is looking for the warrant articles to for the town report that needs to be in by Friday, as in the day the after draft. tomorrow. Yeah. So do we go with one and two in that warrant article <clears throat> language, which I can prepare? Well, it's what initially was presented to the select board. What do you mean one and two? Last night, right? You've just said drop. You've recommended to the What's select two? board to drop. Two will now be the road exceptions. Oh, okay. Okay. There's no okay. three. Okay. One will be what is has been known as 1A, mm -hmm. and two will be the road acceptance. Mm -hmm. Is that what I write for the warrant articles to go into the town report? Can you just do it as a <laughs> put a note in there, you know, these to be to follow? Well, they will say draft. <laughs> they will say draft. What happens if Kevin says they decide them? Vote that they don't send it at all. <laughs> I mean, I think we've punted the ball into the, the selectmen need to decide what goes into yeah, the town. But I'm just letting everybody yeah, know. Yeah, the, the challenge is by we, Friday, don't, right? we don't meet again before the, the it has to go in. Um, let me noodle that one and I'll talk to Jessica <laughs> tomorrow. Okay. What I will do is I will send you the draft language. Okay. Because I'm not going to be working again until next week. And you can, yeah, decide what you want to do with Jessica. Yeah, and I'm I'll be offline as of like noon tomorrow. Okay, because I'll be um, well. Yeah, but Facebook will be live. 
Did I say that out loud? I, I, I need, I need a need motion to uh, so we turn the TV on. Second, second, empty vessels make a lot of noise. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor of adjourning? No. I thought he he was second. Right now, Devin.